Callisto Gardens and see why we are called the Garden City. Once you get a taste of Orangeburg, you'll be back. The city of Orangeburg wishes Coach Buddy Pugh and the Bulldogs of South Carolina State good luck this season. The city of Orangeburg, a proud sponsor of Bulldog football. A top math teacher, a dedicated coach, a best friend, people who inspire you to be your best possible self. At Prisma Health, you inspire us. We're making health care exceptional for everyone across the Midlands and upstate with more access to the highest level of care, research innovations, and patient education, we're committed to helping you be your healthiest you. For appointments, visit prismahealth.org slash inspired. Welcome back to the Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center on the campus of South Carolina State. Tough afternoon for the Lady Bulldogs, 65-57. Kayla McClam, if you would take a look at the stats and run down the score for South Carolina State. Our two leading scorers today was Trinity Clock with 16 points and Nadia Reese with 11 points. And for Mary Eastern Shore, they had three players in double in double digits, with leading it off with Brooke and Bailey with 21 points, Zamira Haynes with 14 points, and then Amanda Carney with 12 points. You know, Bill, when we talked about this scoring before the game, because for basketball plays so many kids, and you look at their scoring, it's so evenly distributed that you really don't know where they're, only, where they're going to get it from, but somehow they they find the people that are having a good day and they get it from them. Yeah, he played uh, nine players tonight, and uh, which is not unusual for Coach Bradshaw. He plays a lot of players, you know, and and uh, he got scoring, uh, you know, three and double figures, and then he got three, four others that came in and did some good work for him. So for South Carolina State, uh, pretty balanced, you know. You got three people with nine points and all that, but I still think the difference was on the boards, Ernest, for they had a big edge, 40 rebounds to 32, and they had 14 offensive rebounds, which led to a lot of second chance points there for, and South Carolina State, 7 of 21 from the three-point line. That's probably the best we shot from the three-point line. All right, we've got to take another timeout. It'll be our final timeout before the men's game. So we got more basketball as the crowd continues to come in. we got South Carolina State. The men will take on Maryland Eastern Shores men. Our final this afternoon in women's action, it's Maryland Eastern Shores 65, Bulldogs 57. We'll be back with a final word on today's game right after this. Home for Sports, ESPN Orangeburg, 1580 AM and 92.9 FM. WPJK Orangeburg. Even a mess. I'm going to make him clean it up, not, not Kim. And, uh, and I'm going to enjoy a game with Kuiper. Because I'd love to see it. You know, he's in the rocking chair. Yep. Going back and forth like this. Uh-huh. Right down some notes. Uh-huh. Talking to me about my next mock draft uh-huh. in 2023. What's, what's, what's the mock draft for 2023 going to look like? That's, that's how a game would go. By halftime, I would call for an Uber and get out of there. So I... Think- I I had a very relaxing night, a few, few family friends, nothing big, but it was, it was a great game. It was, it was interesting, kind of back and forth, and I just thought the ending was so perfect. You, you, first of all, you've got a depleted Rams team. Matthew Stafford, he's got one receiver to go to, and Cooper Cup just finds a way. Double coverage, bracket coverage, you know, high-low coverage. No matter what they were throwing at him, Cooper Cup was just going to find a way to get open or get held and pass interference. And then Joe Burrow gets an opportunity. Now, he wasn't able to get it done. And if there was one player you wanted to see, if you're just kind of looking at it from a non-Rams Bengals perspective, if there was one player who was going to end this great run for Joe Burrow, had to be Aaron Donald. I mean, the work that this guy has put in, 
just going back to his days at Pitt, watching him, and, and I remember, I'll never forget talking to the coaches and talking to their training staff saying, we've never been around a guy like this who works as hard on a, a Monday morning after a game as he does Saturday afternoon during a game. And he's a leader just through a absolute pure dedication and work ethic. And to know he's been doing this now for, what, 10 years in the league, another few years in college, all he's had to go through to get to that spot, fourth down and one, and he's the guy who comes up and makes the big play and ends the drive and, and shuts down Joe Burrow. I, I just thought it was fitting. If it was going to end that way, it was the right player to do it because Aaron Donald, in my opinion, has been the best defensive player in the NFL for the last decade. Yeah, he's certainly climbing up the ranks of the best to ever play the game regardless of position. He and Cooper Cup both could have easily been named Super Bowl MVP. That goes to Cup, who had nine catches. Excuse me, eight catches, two of which went for a touchdown. Just a remarkable season for Cooper Cup. But let's spin things forward because this, this is first draft after all. And the Rams, as we know, have about as little draft capital over the next couple of years as anybody in the NFL. As of right now, and compensatory picks have not been given out. But using over the cap and Nick Corte, who is the godfather of compensatory pick selections, the Rams figure to have, based off of players they lost last year and the fact that they're, or a member of their scouting department, Brad Holmes, got hired to be the Lion General Manager, they figure to have a third-round pick this year, a fourth-round pick this year, their own fifth-round pick, three sixth-round picks, plus two seventh-round picks. Again, most of those being either picks they acquired via a trade or to the compensatory pick formula. So Mel and Todd, you guys aren't going to be very busy this year when it comes to analyzing the Los Angeles Rams as compared to teams like the Jets and the Giants and others that have all this draft capital in Philadelphia. But Mel, I'll ask you this. Is there anything that you think we can learn from the way in which the Rams were willing to sacrifice draft capital in future years to go all in for this season? Or is what the Rams did this year a unique, maybe not once in a lifetime, but once every decade or so approach from a team that actually works. Yeah, it wasn't easy. Uh, you got to give Wes Snead a lot of credit, guys, for what he was able to accomplish here. There was there was competition for Matthew Stafford. Okay, other teams that wanted him, particularly Carolina. You think about what happened with Von Miller bringing him in, Odell Beckham Jr. Everything kind of fell right that these players, number one, were available. Okay, and the teams that had them didn't want to keep them. And then the other teams didn't offer more or didn't jump in and be more aggressive there. So I think you do this, and I said it all along, this was Super Bowl or bust. Uh, not just to get there, they had to win this game. And a lot had to happen for them to win this game. You know, Cincinnati Bengals, everybody thought if they win the turnover battle, the Bengals are winning this game. Well, they won a turnover battle. They didn't turn it over. The Rams did twice, and the Bengals lost, mm. okay? You think about the, the penalties we talked about and what it took for the Rams in this game to overcome Odell Beckham not being there, okay? Odell Beckham gets hurt. If he doesn't get hurt, maybe there is some, some separation, some margin there. Maybe it's a more convincing victory, but he did get hurt. I thought it was going to be like the Alabama game where he had Jamison Williams get hurt after Mechie had got hurt and Alabama lost because they lost their receiver. But here, Beckham hurt. Was that going to cost the Rams? Almost did, guys. Uh, so you think about all the different things uh, that went on for the Rams to get this win. It was well worth it. If they won this game, everything they did, was worth it. If they would have lost, then you could sit in here and critique it. But they had to win this football game. They did. You can talk about the penalty on Logan Wilson, which I thought was should never have happened. You can't call a game that way until the end and then change up the way you called it. You can't do that. But at the end of the day, the Rams earned it. They overcame, like I said, the turnover battle, the injury to Beckham. They had no running game at all. Uh, yet, And I thought Stafford and Burrow, to sit here, guys, think about this. When you saw Stafford go down with Raider, that ankle, I don't know how he survived that injury. Burrow screaming in pain, looking like, oh boy, is this an ACL? What's going on here? Ankle, knee. That both quarterbacks looked like they sustained serious injuries. What would have impacted next year for both these teams? Yet to have them come back and play and not miss any time was pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I, I look at this, and it's remarkable what the Rams did. You know, Les Seed, he's a, he's a different thinker, and I mean that in a positive way. He thinks outside the box, and that's exactly what they had to do. Now, I don't know that it can be replicated. I don't know that yeah. this is something you go into a year trying to do, but I, I think they saw their window and, and have attacked, and, and really their window has been the last few years, if you look back. I mean, they haven't had a first-round pick. I think uh, this will be the fifth year that the Rams do not pick in the first five rounds. 
and, and unless they acquire one moving forward via trade, they don't have a, a first-round pick until, I think, 2024. So that'll be a seven-year span where an organization in the NFL doesn't pick in the first round. It's, it's remarkable. But Les Snead and this organization had, had a plan. And, you know, so many years we saw with the Washington Redskins. They won the offseason. The big-name free agents, the big prices, stretching the salary cap to, it, to the, you know, the limits of it. And they never, they never won. They won, this, they won free agency, they won the offseason, and they never did anything in the season to, you know, to make up for or to pay dividends to what they invested. So to me, this was a different model. This was, all right, we drafted well for a while. Now we're going to bring in free agents and we're going to plug spots. And really the, the whole change was Matthew Stafford. That's the glue that was missing. Not shocking at the most important position in sports, in my opinion. So uh, what they did was unique. I don't even think you would want this as your model. I'm not saying it was a bad idea, because they, but they saw this situation. They saw their roster. They saw what they needed. And then they, they seized on opportunities, as Mel was talking about, to get some players. And yeah, they had to spend some first-round picks and some third-round picks, but then there were some fifth- and sixth-round picks. Sonny Michelle, I think, was a, for a fifth or a sixth-round pick. So there were some guys that they brought in and, and traded later-round picks for, but they wanted that apples-to-apples scouting comparison in the NFL to in the NFL versus having to draft college guys and develop them because they knew their window was going to be short. Now, what do you do if you're less need? You know, you work off the hangover for about 48 more hours, and then you get back to work. <laughs> And you're going to figure out, you know, all right, we got a bunch of aging guys. Aaron Donald talked about maybe if, if we win the Super Bowl, he, he's gone, he's going to retire. How long's Matthew Stafford here? How, we've got a lot of elder statesmen. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to replenish this roster and kind of build from the back end to make sure we don't wake up a year or two from now and have a complete rebuild on our hands? Yeah, they deserve a ton of credit, by the way, for finding players not in the first round. They still have the sixth most homegrown players on their roster amongst all NFL teams this hmm. year. Some late round, even undrafted gems. By That's the remarkable. Team. Yeah, really impressive job by the entire scouting department. Greeny with Mike Greenberg. I actually think all the speculation about it leading up was good for the NBA. I think it made it better, not worse. Greeny, weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on ESPN+. Plus. Are you paying too much for term life insurance? There's a tremendous price war among the major term life companies, and rates have dropped dramatically in the past few years. For example, for a man age 45 non-tobacco user, it's $1 million of coverage at $75 per month, level rate for the next 10 years. Or a man age 50 non-tobacco user can obtain $500,000 of coverage for a monthly premium of only $110 per month, guaranteed not to change for the next 20 years. That's right, level rate guaranteed not to change for the next 20 years. If you're a smoker, we have great rates available for you as well. At Term Busters, we specialize in policies of $500,000 and above. If you're looking for a new or replacement term life insurance, call today for a quote at 1-866-929-1950. That's 1-866-929-1950. You're probably paying more than you should. Call Term Busters at 1-866-929-1950. That's 1-866-929-1950. Remember, 1-866-929-1950. Rates and availability may vary by state sample rate quotes for preferred non-tobacco underwriting. Exam required to qualify. The 2022 NBA All-Star Game. Durant for three in the lead. He's got it. James. For three. Good. Team LeBron faces Team Durant. Then beat drive hard into the lane. And plus it was two hammers are right here. Plus home by the Greek Freak. Curry about 35 feet from the hole. The 2022 NBA All-Star Game live from Cleveland, Ohio. Coverage begins tomorrow at 7 Eastern on ESPN Orangeburg, 1580 AM and 92.9 FM. Get ready for an evening among the stars. Saturday, March 5th at South Carolina State University. Join the SC State University Foundation at 7 PM for the 31st annual scholarship gala and tribute at the Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit sc.stategives.com or dial 803-536-7190. Enjoy live music. The 
delicious food and help us celebrate the accomplishments of six outstanding student scholars. Your contributions will make a difference in the lives of students at SC State University. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit sc.stategives.com or dial 803-536-7190. Live streaming options are available for the 31st Annual Scholarship Gala and Tribute. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, you may qualify for a free continuous glucose monitor system. Managing your diabetes is crucial to your health. The new CGM systems can automatically manage your diabetes better for you. And by using a CGM system, you can eliminate forever one thing most people with diabetes hate the most, finger sticks. Now it's possible to manage your diabetes better end the painful finger sticks and get a new CGM monitoring system at little or no cost to you. We even provide in-home delivery and do all the insurance paperwork for you. Now is the best time to manage your diabetes better and get your continuous glucose monitor. Call now for details. Call 800-438-1391. 800-438-1391. That's 800-438-1391. Paid for by U.S. Med. Hi, this is Phil Kornblut, and each weeknight, sports fans across South Carolina come together on Sports Talk here on ESPN Orangeburg, 1580 AM, 92.9 FM. We bring you the latest from the Bulldogs, Gamecocks, and Tigers, interviews with sports personalities, and our own takes on the key issues, plus plenty of your calls. So be sure to join us each week, not at 6, for Sports Talk, South Carolina's number one sports talk show, right here on ESPN Orangeburg, 1580 AM, 92.9 FM. You found Orangeburg's home for sports. ESPN Orangeburg, 1580 AM and 92.9 FM. Intangibles are outstanding. The guy is, I mean, everyone around him loves him, will run through a wall for Matt Corral. The First Draft Podcast with Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, and Phil Yates. Subscribe and listen wherever you get your podcast. Let's go to the Bengals. And it feels a little bit oversimplified, but perhaps too much of a problem to ignore, Mel, that if you're Cincinnati and you currently own the 31st pick in the draft and you have every single one of your picks this year and for really the next four years, actually, uh, and plus an extra seventh-round pick from the Giants, so you have just a very normal amount of draft capital. feels like if you can find an offensive lineman or two or four, you might have to. Yeah, you couldn't do it all in one draft. They brought in Jackson Carmen, but obviously Jamar Chase, the Penny Sewell whole debate, it worked out great for the Bengals and through Tobin. They made the right call. You can't get everything fixed in one draft. They still got to the Super Bowl, almost won it. The offensive line was bad all year. Joe Burrow was sacked more than any other quarterback. How many times he was sacked in a Tennessee game? Nine. Could have been ten. Should have been ten. This game, how many times was he sacked? Even at the end, that would have been a sack. So, again, you're talking about... Uh, you know, an offensive line's got to be fixed. Joe Burrow had the knee injury uh, the first year, almost injured in this game, and all the other sacks he took. Think about that. Just to survive the season for Joe, very important, and he did. But you can't have this happening. You can't have Joe Burrow, you know, getting sacked more than any other quarterback in the league again this coming year. They know they have to fix that. I think they're going to attack it. It's not a great offensive line. You're going to get into the depth of the, of the positions, and you got to really do your scouting. You do some really wise scouting and to make some good decisions and eliminate some guys that may be overrated, pick the right guy. It's not going to be easy evaluating these offensive linemen. They've got to get multiple guys, multiple offensive line picks. They have with five of the top 140. You're talking about uh, you know, picks that uh, you know, are going to be probably three of those picks. I think a minimum three are offensive linemen. Yeah, and I, I look at the Bengals and I, and I see, you know, so, so much we talk about these first rounders leading up to the draft, right? And then you go back and you look four or five years later, and it's like, well, they, they hit on about 50% of them. The Bengals have done a really good job of hitting on their early picks. You know, obviously Joe Burrow was, was, a, it was an easy choice at the, at the time. Sometimes you've got to get lucky and be in the right situation. They were, and they, they made the right decision. <laughs>
welcome to the Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center on the campus of South Carolina State University. It's time for South Carolina State basketball on WPJK ESPN Orangeburg. Hi, everybody. I'm Ernest Robinson, along with my broadcast colleague, the Hall of Famer, Bill Hamilton, set to bring you all the play-by-play -play and color pageantry of what is South Carolina State Bulldog basketball on this radio station today. The South Carolina State Bulldogs taking on the Maryland Eastern Shore Hawks. And, Bill, this promises to be an exciting basketball game. Bulldogs need to continue their winning ways to stay in that MEAC race. You're right. It's a pivotal game for Coach Madlock and his team. Of course, uh, this will be the second meeting of the season for these two teams uh, back on uh, January 22nd. Uh, the Bulldogs went into uh, Princess Anne, Maryland, and came out with a 69-60 win over uh, Coach uh, over the Hawks. Of course, in that game, Jamel Davis showed big for South Carolina State, 16 points. Dequan Williams had 12 rebounds. So, but today uh, we see what could happen. Uh, the Lady Bulldogs, who won on the road, uh, took a loss here today. So. The Bulldogs trying to stay in this race, you know, right now they're two games, uh, three games behind Norfolk Stakes, uh, and uh, they're right there battling Howard and uh, Coffin State for a pivotal spot uh, in the seat, and so uh, they need a win tonight, Ernest, to stay in that race. Maryland is ensured coached by Jason Crafton. They're 8-12 overall, 3-6 and six in the MEAC. South Carolina State, of course, coached by Tony Madlock, 13-11 and 11 overall. And uh, as far as the conference is concerned, Bulldogs are five and three on the season, eight and eight in the non-conference season. And Bill, if somebody told you that we would go eight and eight in the non-conference season before the season started, you go. Uh, yeah, we'll take it. I, I tell you what, I, w I, w I wish I could have played some bets on that, but <laughs> because certainly you know we had a really tough year last year, and uh, Tony Matlock came in, of course. Uh, you know, first year guy, first head coaching job, and he's done a good job here in uh, pulling this team together. There's no doubt about that. We're going to take a time out. We'll come back. We'll have more in our pregame show. South Carolina State, Maryland, Eastern Shore, coming up next on WPJK ESPN Orangeburg. This is SportsCenter. I'm Ed Benkin. Brian Flores is suing the NFL. However, he is no longer out of work. The Steelers have hired Flores as a senior defensive assistant and linebackers coach. Flores currently suing the NFL for racial discrimination. To college basketball, another busy Saturday. Number two, Auburn is in a tight fight with Florida in Gainesville. 2.54 to go in the second half. It's the Gators on top. 56 to 53. Number four, Kentucky was a winner over 25th ranked Alabama, 90 to 81. Meanwhile, number 11, Texas Tech took care of business in Austin. Arms tapping the top of his head. Left wing, Terrence Shannon, who's got no field goals. He's 0 for 5. Here's this high dribble weed. Got a slip pass. Got by Williams right on par. Right in his face. Right in his face. That's Chef Haxon with the call on Learfield as the Red Raiders beat the 20th ranked Longhorns 61 to 55. Also, number 12, Illinois, a winner over number 19, Michigan State 79 to 74. Number 7, Baylor, a winner over TCU 72 to 62. Coming up next on ESPN Radio, North Carolina visits Virginia Tech in an ACC clash. The NBA All Star Weekend continues coming up tonight on ESPN Radio. It's All Star Saturday night featuring three point shooting and the dunk contest. The All-Star festivities conclude tomorrow night when Team Duran takes on Team LeBron. That game can also be heard on ESPN Radio. College football will have the same playoff format through 2025 with four teams competing for the national title. The vote was reportedly 8-3 yesterday, and the Olympics wrapping up in Beijing. Three more medals won by the U.S. today. They now have 24, eight of them gold. Norway on top with 35. Hey, Sweetie, hope you're enjoying the weekend. We got NBA All-Star festivities to talk about when we return, and we turn our attention to the next part of the NBA season. It's going to be critical. We'll see you then. It's Greeny, starting 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN+. Plus. Anyone
Anyone who has ever needed self-storage knows what a hassle it can be. You have to rent or borrow a truck and then find someone to help you move your stuff. And let's face it, moving furniture and heavy items without damaging them isn't easy. Renting the unit is worse. The hidden fees and admin costs are scarier than the dingy facilities you're leaving your stuff in. Why not use Closet Box instead? Closet Box is self-storage without leaving home. They'll pick up your belongings, store them securely, and bring any item back when you need it. The best part? Unlike traditional self-storage, you only pay for what you store. No paying for unused storage space. Closet Box's background check storage movers are licensed, bonded, and insured and will take care of all of the heavy lifting. Closet Box's local storage centers are temperature controlled and monitored 24-7. Closet Box has an A-plus rating from the BBB. Call 877-233-5696 now for the season's best rates. Get $50 off first month storage using code RADIO50. That's 877-233-5696. 877-233-5696. It's working. Welcome back to the Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center on the campus of South Carolina State. We're ready for Bulldog basketball. Bulldogs taking on the Hawks of Maryland Eastern Shore, Bill. And you start talking about the South Carolina State basketball team. Bulldogs can't be taken lightly by anybody in the conference. You're right. Uh, it's as we talked about earlier, it's been a surprise season for South Carolina State. Right in the middle of the conference race, now in the thick of things. And, and as uh, I talked to my colleagues around the league, they said this is the one team nobody wants to play in the upcoming Mid-East Athletic Tournament, which is going to be up in Norfolk, uh, the 8th through the 12th. South Carolina State's lead in scoring by T.J. Matlock at 11.6 points a ball game. We talked about Cameron Jones, Bill, who at one time was the leading scorer on this team, second leading scorer on this team, averaging 11 points a game, but he is out for the rest of the season. Yes, I, I learned early, you know, I know he had missed the last three three ball games, and I, I inquired, you know, what was wrong, and he had surgery, so he's out for the season. And uh, that's a big loss for South Carolina State because, as you said, he was – the leading scorer for most of the year, and he also did a lot of other good things, rebounding and around the basket for Coach Madlock's team. So he is, he's a big miss. After you go past T.J. Madlock and, and uh, Cameron Jones, you get to Jamil Davis, who, of course, is averaging right at nine points a game. Omar Kroski, nine points a game. Ed Oliver Hampton, eight points a game. And uh, Rashawn Edwards at seven points a game, Bill. So kind of like uh, Maryland Eastern Shores Bally. women, they're a better scorer for T.J. Madlock, Tony Madlock. And, indeed, and uh, Rashad, Rashad Edwards has really played some good ball these last five or so ball games. Uh, he... Uh, He's really, um, he's really been uh, on the boards, and of course, uh, he's a good rebounding guard. Both our point guards there, you know, uh, T.J. Matlock is also a good rebounding guard for, for his size and all. So uh, the backcourt is going to be key for South Carolina State, of course. Uh, Mount Eastern Shore is going to be looking to avenge that loss uh, back on January 22nd, 69-60 on their home court. You know, you start talking about this Maryland Eastern Shore team, Bill. They are well-balanced as well, leading scoring by Don London. Yes, indeed. Yeah, he's, he's uh, doing really well. He's averaging about 11.2 points per game. Right behind him is uh, Zion Stiles, 10.2. Deshaun Phillips, who had the big game up there when South Carolina State played. With, he led the team in uh, scoring and rebounding, 11.5 rebounds in that loss. So they got balanced scoring as well. So I think this would be a pretty interesting, I expect it to be a close contested ball game. It's amazing how the Bulldog men and the Bulldog women kind of contrast each other, Bill, from the standpoint of they both have the same Achilles heel in some instances. That is the attention to uh, commit fouls and get in foul trouble early. That's one of the problems. Uh, there are not many problems with this basketball team. That's one Tony Manlock would like to avoid. I certainly, you know, even, uh, you know, his son T.J., who's uh, you know, you know he he gets in foul trouble early, lots of time, and have to sit for most of the half. And they need him on the floor because of all the things that he does. And it's the same thing for Jamil Davis, who's really a really good shooter around the basket, and he's a uh, he's uh, also an excellent rebounder and a shot blocker. So you need those guys on the court 
Uh, but when they get in early foul trouble, they end up having to sit. Bulldogs now being introduced. T.J. Madlock, one of the starters. Jamel Davis, also Omar Krosky. Bill, one of your favorites, Omar Krosky. Yes, indeed. A good, a good player from the standpoint. Can shoot the three and, of course, create. Yes, indeed. And he's, you know, lots of times they run him off that three-point line. He'll go in with that left hand and uh, uh, does a good job in uh, scoring inside. Maryland Eastern Shore will be wearing all burgundy uniforms, gray numerals, the uh, shore on the front of the jerseys, written across the front of the jerseys. And, of course, South Carolina State clad in all white jerseys, white pants, garnet numerals, and, uh, and blue trim. Maryland Eastern Shore, gray numerals, white trim. And, of course, uh, a little design, an arrow going down the side of the, several arrows going down the side of their uniforms. You can join us via... South Carolina State's website as uh, the game will be shown, the video, and you can get the audio as well. Of course, glad to have you with us, of course, at our home, WPJK ESPN Orangeburg. Bulldogs will be going from our left to our right. Maryland Eastern Shore from our right to our left. If you're watching on at home on video, it's just the opposite because we're crossing the camp from the cameras. Jumping center for Maryland Eastern Shore will be number 11, um, Cohen Thompson. He'll be jumping center for Maryland Eastern Shore, 6'7", junior from Memphis, South Carolina State. It is Jamel Davis. There's the toss, and we're underway, controlled in the backcourt by Daquan Wims. So give over to Rashawn Edwards, and we are underway here in Orangeburg. Edwards with the basketball, hawked over there by Chase Davis. Edwards. Goes top of the key now to Jamil Davis. Davis looking inside. will hand over to T.J. Madlock. Madlock on the left wing. Goes right side to Rashawn Edwards. Edwards dribbles toward the right baseline. Stops. 17 footers up and good. Rashawn Edwards with the bucket for South Carolina State. Yeah, he's always off to a good start. I hope uh, he can kind of maintain that intensity throughout the ball game. Deshaun Phillips with the basketball. Goes top of the key to Kevin Boyles. Back left wing now is Cohen Thompson. Lobbed it inside to Voiles. Voiles turn around jumper is good. Uh, yeah. Good entry pass there by the Hawks to get that layup. Edwards with the basketball on the right wing now. Edwards. Hawking defense by Maryland Eastern Shore. Top of the key, Jamel Davis throws it inside to Decoan Williams. Saves it to Krosky over left wing to TJ. Top of the key, jumper. Jamel, it's off the back of the rim. Tapped up, rebounded by Krosky. He was... Puts it back up to foul, missed the second opportunity, and with the basketball on the ground is Maryland Eastern Shore fought for it. Fighting over there for the Hawks is Nathan Pollard Jr., the 6'5 senior from Richmond. Looks like the ball is going to go to an alternate possession to go to the Hawks. Uh, Koski had two good looks in there, just couldn't get it to fall. Yep. 2-2 two, two our score, 18.45 to go first half. Ernest Robinson, Bill Hamilton, and WPJK ESPN Orangeburg. Glad to have you with us. Across the timeline for Maryland Eastern Shore, that was Phillips. He'll go left side now to Cohen Thompson. Thompson starts a dribble drive, picks it up, goes top of the key to Nathan Pollard Jr. Back over to Thompson. Shot put up. Kevon Boyles off the front of the rim. It's fought for rebounded by Marco Milovic. Sorry, that is 22 Pollard Jr. inside. Missed the shot, but tapped up and in. Pollard Jr. gets the follow. Yeah. Allen needs to show it. The early lead, 4-2. Rashawn Edwards with the basketball. Goes left wing now to Jamel Davis. Starts to drive. Davis lost the handle. It's recovered over there by Nathan Pollard Jr. Pollard Jr. up the floor to Phillips. Phillips with the drive. Picks up the basketball. Now passes it back out front to Kevon Voiles. Voiles goes left side now to Chase Davis. Davis into the left corner with the basketball. Back out front to Deshaun Phillips. Phillips. Phillips starts to drive. Picks up the basketball. Long shot put up. And good. Chase Davis with the bucket. Uh, they, they took every second. <laughs> All the time off the clock and still scored. So Bulldogs get behind early 7-2 to Maryland Eastern Shore with that three. Edwards with the drive. Edwards, only person to score for the Bulldogs. Daquan Williams puts up jumper. It's off the back of the rim. It's rebounded by Maryland Eastern Shores. Nathan Pollard Jr. Pollard Jr. very active here on the boards early on. Over to Phillips. In the front court is Cohen Thompson. Back over to Pollard Jr. Over to Phillips. Nearly lost the handle. Back out front now. Deshaun Phillips will hand over to Kevin Thompson. Back over to Phillips. Back top of the key now. Back over to Phillips. Phillips 
Long three-pointers up and good. Oh, my goodness. Phillips, 10-2. Phillips had the big game up in Princess Anne back in January. 11 points, five rebounds for the Hawks. 10-2. Maryland Eastern Shore jumping on South Carolina State here early. 16 and a half to go. Daquan Williams along the right baseline. Pump fake. Stops. Puts a shot up. It's blocked. Nathan Pollard knocks it off to Sean Williams. And Nathan Pollard been so active, Bill. I tell you, that was a good defensive series there for Nathan Pollard. He kept uh, Daquan Williams from getting this at his spot. Up off the bench is Ed Oliver Hampton will come in and try to give the Bulldogs a punch along the front line. Yeah, he's played awfully well these last four or five ball games. Uh, had 14 rebounds earlier. Up the floor now, all the Hawks. With the basketball, this is Keevon Boyles. Turnaround jumper by Chase Davis is no good. Rebounded by Edwards, and here come the Bulldogs. Edwards toward the middle of the floor, directing traffic along the left side now. Nothing there. Goes top of the key to Ed Oliver Hampton. Back over to T.J. Madlock. Madlock will hand off to Omar Crofty. Top of the key, Edwards. Edwards wants to move the basketball. Man-to-man defense by Maryland Eastern Shore. And kind of in, bother in South it's, Carolina State. It's, it's pretty intense defense. And Edwards crossover dribble starts to drive. Nothing there. Fade away. Inside pass to Jabell Davis. Lays it Good. up and in. Nice look inside from Edwards to Jabell Davis. Bulldogs get our second bucket. 10-4. Maryland Eastern Shores lead is six. 15 and a half to go. First half. Nathan Pollard Jr. Hand over to Phillips. Phillips goes left side to Boyles. Boyles stops. Entry pass to Nathan Pollard Jr. Pollard on Ed Oliver Hampton. Spin. Goes outside now. Long shot put up by Thompson. It's no good. Rebounded Ed Oliver Hampton. Outlet to T.J. Matlock. And here come the Bulldogs. Matlock in the front court. Matlock. Dribble, dribble drive, lays it up. It's in. What a drive <laughs> by DJ Matlock. Boy, he looked good on that. 10-6. 15 minutes to go first half. Matlock was determined on that play. Chase Davis with the basketball. Passes right side to Boyles. Boyles starts to drive, hands off to Phillips. Phillips hawked by Rashawn Edwards. Goes top of the key to Phillip, to uh, Ed, Nathan Pollard Jr. Pollard Jr. backing down Ed Oliver Hampton has to go out front. Phillips to the drive, has it knocked away. Rashawn Edwards knocked it away. It's the last touch by South Carolina State. We'll take a timeout with 14.42 to go first half. It's 10-6, Maryland Eastern Shore. for Bulldog basketball after this. At Founders Federal Credit Union, we know success is a team effort. We're always cheering for you, side by side, so you can dream big and achieve your goals. Offering products and services that put you in the lead. Whether that's helping you buy a car, build your savings, or supporting your community. We're here with the financial support you need. That's teamwork. Score big with Founders Federal Credit Union. Relax with Founders. Ticket Smarters, glad we're back to holding live events. If you're looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of South Carolina State Athletics. Ticket Smarter a smarter way to buy tickets. I'm not like some whoop de doo executive chef. You know, I consider myself more of a baker than a chef. I like working with my hands. I like turning regular ingredients into like something spectacular. The South Carolina Education Lottery has funded over 450,000 life scholarships in our state, giving countless students a chance to answer their calling, just like Aaron. Your passion is our purpose. There was a time when a person's word was enough. A time when a handshake meant something. And integrity really mattered. Farm Bureau Insurance continues to live by these principles. That's our pledge. And it hasn't changed since the day we got started. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. Learn more at scfbins.com. Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to support SC State Athletics. Contact your local agent for all your auto, home, and life insurance needs. All South Carolinians aged five years and older are now eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. For help finding a vaccine location in your area, visit scdhec.gov slash vaxlocator or call 1-866-365-8110. 
COVID-19 vaccines are free and don't require ID or insurance. Visit scdheck.gov slash vaxlocator or call 1-866-365-8110 to find a vaccine location near you. The Columbia Metropolitan Airport supports South Carolina State University from takeoff to touchdown. May it be in the sky or on the field, CAE will get the Bulldogs there and back safely and with ease. Be sure to check out all of CAE's nonstop destinations by visiting flycae.com. Welcome back to Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center. Ernest Robinson, Bill Hamilton on WPJK ESPN Orangeburg. Ed Oliver Hampton at the free throw line. Score still the same, 10-6. Maryland Eastern Shore leading. Ed Oliver Hampton's second attempt is no good. Rebounded by Phelps. It goes nearly out of bounds. I thought Maryland Eastern Shore had thrown it away, but the Hawks have the basketball. Yeah, Hawks off to a quick 10-6 uh, uh, start here. They were leading 10-2 before Bulldogs scored the final four point, last four points. They cut the lead to four, ten to six. In the basketball game, Glenn Anderson gets it left uh, side to uh, three. That is, that is. Uh, That's Mike Manash, M- Mensa. Mensa with Mike Mensa with a three. Thirteen six now. South Carolina State trailing. Maryland Eastern Shore. Omar Crosco hand over to T.J. Madlock. Madlock goes left side now to Jamil Davis. Runner is up. It's no good. Fought for a rebounder by Ed Oliver Hampton. Hampton somehow thought he was almost out of bounds. Able to work his way back inside and throw it up off the backboard and drew the foul. He's really battling. You know, he had 14 rebounds against Delaware State, you know, Monday Bill a week ago. Uh, he's really tough on the boards. He's He's tall, but he's pencil thin, but he's a real warrior under the boards there. Ed Oliver Hampton will be at the free throw line. And Oliver Hampton for South Carolina State, averaging a little more than eight points a game. First attempt is up and good. One of three from the free throw line. He's averaging right at eight points a game. And from the free throw line, he is almost an 80% free throw shooter. It's out of character for him to miss as he did earlier. You're right. Missed the first two. Second attempt is up, and it's good. 13-8 eight, eight now. Bulldogs trail by five. In the backcourt now, handling the basketball is Glenn Anderson for Maryland Eastern Shore. He and Tuka Nunzen in the game. Right side now is Mike Mensa. Mensa back across the floor to Anderson. Anderson on the left wing, starts to dribble drive, lost the handle. Fought for it, recovered over there by South Carolina State. We lost it on the ground, and the possession there was going to point out Vink for like South the, Carolina State. The Bulldog doing the alternate possession should get this one. Also in the ball game now, Melwa Akinsanya, Akinsanya, Melwa Akinsanya. So he's in the basketball game. He'll play center for Maryland Eastern Shore. Across the timeline is Rashawn Edwards. Akinsanya comes out on him for a second with Anderson. Edwards with the basketball. Shot clock down to 15 seconds. Edwards crossover dribble goes right side to Krosky. Krosky for three. It's good. Omar Krosky with the three. My God. 13 to 11 now. It's a two-point Maryland Eastern Shore lead. It's, it's always good to see Krosky get off to a good start. 12 and a half to go here first half. Greg Anderson walks it across the timeline, keeps the dribble alive, goes right side now to Mensa. Bounce pass kicked over there, Jamel Davis. Bulldogs. Playing really good defense. Quickly up off the Maryland Eastern Shore bench. Wholesale substitutions. Yeah, like the big blue team, as we call when you do those wholesale uh, Akin- substitutions. Akinsanya, to my chagrin, goes out of the game. Not say that I'm not disappointed, because I was dealing with having a time with that with name. With that name, my goodness. Hassan Phillips with the basketball. Hands over to Corn Thompson back in. That's Pilot Jr. will hand over to Phillips. Sean Phillips backs it out. Deshaun Phillips. Over to Pilot. Deshaun Phillips at the top of the key. Has it knocked away. South Carolina State steals it. Krosky has it knocked away. Another kickball, and it'll be the Bulldogs basketball. Trailing by two with 12.03 remaining here in the first half. Bulldogs with a chance to uh, knock the game up or take the lead with a three. Bulldogs will speed things up as they bring in Raheem <laughs> Gary into the ball game at the backcourt. He certainly does speed things up. Raheem Gary, 5'10 sophomore from Dallas, Texas. By way of Wallace Selman Junior College. Rakeem Gary across the, across the timeline. 
Great quickness, outstanding speed. Inside pass to Jamel Davis. Davis turns around, nicely done. Jamel Davis, but what a pass from Rakeem Gary. Makes, ties the game at 13. Yep, Davis uh, in the game uh, up there uh, in January, you know, he had 16 points to lead South Carolina State. Powell Jr. at the top of the key, picks up his dribble. Goes right side now to Chase Davis. Chase Davis to LaShawn Phillips. Phillips. Top of the key now to Chase Davis. Long three is good. That's second Chase up the Davis night. with the three-pointer. He averages 7.2 points a game. He's a freshman from Okokik, Maryland. He's got six already. Two, three. 16, 13. Bulldogs lead the three. Bulldogs trail by three. Ed Oliver Hampton out front to Tony Madlock. He can get over to Madlock. Madlock wasn't ready for the pass. Recovered it. Stolen by Phillips. Outlet up the floor to Chase Davis. Right side now is... Cohen Thompson missed the layup. They somehow, Mel Leaks and Short came back with the rebound, and there's going to be a foul call. I think this is going to be on Omar Crosker, either T.J. Madlock. It's going to be on Omar Crosker. And there's a timeout on the floor with 10.57 to go here in the first half. Our score, Maryland Eastern Shore, 16. South Carolina State, 13. We'll have more Bulldog basketball on WPJK ESPN Orangeburg right after this. Are you paying too much for term life insurance? There's a tremendous price war among the major term life companies, and rates have dropped dramatically in the past few years. For example, for a man age 45 non-tobacco user, it's $1 million of coverage at $75 per month, level rate for the next 10 years. Or a man age 50 non-tobacco user can obtain $500,000 of coverage for a monthly premium of only $110 per month, guaranteed not to change for the next 20 years. That's right, level rate guaranteed not to change for the next 20 years. If you're a smoker, we have great rates available for you as well. At Term Busters, we specialize in policies of $500,000 and above. If you're looking for a new or replacement term life insurance, call today for a quote at 1-866-929-1950. That's 1-866-929-1950. You're probably paying more than you should. Call Term Busters at 1-866-929-1950. That's 1-866-929-1950. Remember, 1-866-929-1950. Rates and availability may vary by state sample rate quotes for preferred non-tobacco underwriting. Exam required to qualify. Welcome back to the Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center on the campus of South Carolina State. It's Maryland Eastern Shore 16, South Carolina State 13. Maryland Eastern Shore has led it throughout. Bulldogs have tied it once. Points, both of them on, uh, came from uh, two threes that he hit. He's only averaging about seven and a half points per game, but he had six early here for Maryland Eastern Shore. Kevon Voiles is at the free throw line. He averages eight and a half a game. First shot up and good. Boyles is a 6'3 guard, junior out of Cape Charles, Virginia. Boyles' second attempt is airborne and good. 18-13, Maryland Eastern Shores lead back to five. T.J. Madlock has it stolen from him. Up the floor down for Maryland Eastern Shores. Chase Davis goes to Boyles. Boyles back over. Shot put up by Thompson is fouled. So Cohen Thompson... 6'7", junior from Memphis. The, the Hawks are showing a lot of aggressiveness, uh, you know, especially after turnovers. They go right to the right. Opportunity here to add to that lead. Uh, South Carolina State going to have to protect their basketball a little bit better. 10.47 to go here first half. Cohen Thompson's free throw attempt is up. It is no good. Cohen Thompson <laughs> may be familiar with the Matlocks. He's from Memphis, Tennessee. Wow, so... So that's his hometown. TJ comes out. His the coach, his dad, is giving him a little advice there on the sideline. Second attempt is up and good. 19-13 now. Lar the largest lead has been eight for Maryland Eastern Shore. Uh, back over to Rakeem Gary across the timeline, up the floor to Jamel Davis. Davis back out front to Rakeem. Hawkins man to man defense. Hawkins zone defense. Now matchup zone. 2 3 zone for Maryland Eastern Shore. Left wing now. End of the game is Daquan Brown. Ah, pass is stolen. Ed Oliver Hampton's pass is stolen by Maryland Eastern Shore. And here comes Chase Davis yep. and the Hawks. He was trying to find Jamil Davis inside, uh, but uh, didn't make a good pass. Davis pulls up right at the elbow. Out front to Deshaun Phillips. Other side to Boyles. Boyles pump fake. Crossover dribble now. Back out front, Cohen Thompson. Back out front to Boyles. Hawks by Krofke. 
Seven seconds on the shot clock. Powell Jr. backing it out of Hampton down. Turns, fades off the backboard. No good. Krosky with the rebound for South Carolina State. Here come the Bulldogs. Hakeem Gary. Right side is Daquan Brown. Over to Gary. Maryland needs to show switching back to man-to-man -man defense this time down. Hakeem Gary. Gary got the matchup he wants. Gets it into Jamel Davis. Davis. Post up, spin move, off the glass. Nicely done, Boy. Jamel Davis. He has played quite well inside these last four or five ball games. And when he gets the ball on the block, he's a real threat to score. 19-15, the Hawk lead is four. Deshaun Phillip with the basketball. Left wing now to Chase Davis. Back over to Phillips. Other side to Boyles. Gets the pick. Drives on Omar Krosky. Goes into the left corner. Phillip starts to drive. Toward the free throw line, fadeaway shot is up and good. Uh, Phillips. Phillips, he's really money. Nine points a game. He's a junior from Baltimore. Went to Dunbar High School. You come uh, from Dunbar. Dunbar you you, you got to be able to play. You got to be able to play. <laughs> yeah. Like Dunbar. I'm, in, I'm from Dunbar? Yeah. Ed Oliver Hampton uh, has another, a another turnover. Krosky goes down. And a lot of pushing in seven. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be uh, the Hawks sure. ball this time on the alternate possession. Daquan Williams will come back in for South Carolina State. First time we've seen Latavian Lawrence yeah. come into the game. South Carolina State's having a little trouble in handling the basketball. There are too many turnovers here, and most of them are unforced, so I'm not sure what it is, but maybe they they get it together. But you talk about Phillips, you know, he, he had a big game uh, in that loss up there to the Bulldogs back in January. You know, he had 11 points. Uh, he also led the team in rebounds that game with five, so he's he's a really uh, productive player for the Hawks. My guy, Akinsai, uh, Miyawa Akinsanya, is he's back, in, back the in the game. My goodness, okay. Yep. He'll handle <laughs> up the floor is Phillips. Right side now is Tuka Nunja. Top of the key now, Nunja with the basketball. Nunja go right side to Chase Davis. Left side, Tuka Nunja with the shot. It's no good. It's rebounded by Dequan Williams. Outlet up the floor to Rakeem Gary. Gary wants to speed it up. Goes baseline to Latavian. Back out front to Rakeem. Rakeem getting the offense set. Dribbles right side, Rakeem Gary. Gary goes left wing now to Dequan Williams. I'm at Rakeem Brown. He'll give over to Omar Krosky. A little bit too much dribbling here by the board. All and there's the end, steal. End up losing the basketball. On the drive, Gary Anderson, and it's blocked on the back uh, by Daquan they, Williams. They call a, a goal tender. Goal tender, yeah, they gave him the basket anyway. It's a timeout on the floor with 7.58 to go here in the first half. I know Coach uh, Madlock wanted to talk things over because these guys are making too many unforced errors. They're giving Maryland Eastern Shore all kinds of opportunities to score. It's 23 for Maryland Eastern Shore, 15 for South Carolina State. We'll have more Bulldog basketball on ESPN. WPJK right after this. In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. For nearly 50 years, it's also been measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately, graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game. They're playing to win at life. Because games end, but life keeps on going. The MEAC, educating student athletes for the... The city of Orangeburg is proud to be the home of the South Carolina State University Bulldogs. We invite you to come and see us and see what we're all about. Visit beautiful Edisto Gardens and see why we are called the Garden City. Once you get a taste of Orangeburg, you'll be back. The city of Orangeburg wishes Coach Buddy Pugh and the Bulldogs of South Carolina State good luck this season. The city of Orangeburg, a proud sponsor of Bulldog football. Welcome back to the Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center on the campus of South Carolina State. It's men's basketball, South Carolina State men's basketball. Bulldogs trail Maryland Eastern Shore by a score of 23 to 15. And Maryland Eastern Shore this afternoon led by Chase Davis with two three-pointers. Yep. South Carolina State, Jamil, Jamal Davis, of course, he's the leading scorer for the Bulldogs. He also has six on three or five shooting from the field. But... Maryland Eastern Shore has quietly built an eight-point lead here, Ernest, early. Full-court pressure now by Maryland Eastern Shore. 
T.J. Madlock brings it up, gets it back over to Rakeem Gary. Gary back over to Madlock, and he gets across the timeline. Maryland needs to show a change in defenses again. Looks like a 1-2-2 zone defense. T.J. Madlock back over to Rakeem Gary. Gary loves it. Three-pointers good, Rakeem Gary. He could hit that shot. <laughs> loves shooting it from the outside. I, I tell you, he does. 23-18, the Bulldogs cut it to five. Walking it up the floor for Maryland Eastern Shore. That is Deshaun Phillips. He is guarded over there by Daquan Brown. Chase Davis lost the handle. It's recovered over there by Anderson. Anderson starts to drive baseline pass. It is nicely done and put in off the glass. That's Chase. Chase, Chase Davis. Davis. Boy, he's a good-looking player. Daquan Williams. And I tell you what, Chase Davis is getting after it. And some pushing and shoving, but again, both teams being yeah, yeah, very showing, aggressive. Showing a lot of aggression on Mike yeah. Pensa and Daquan Williams over there. Yeah. And nothing dirty about it. Uh, no, they're playing just, hard. They're just playing hard, playing very aggressive. And I think it's caught the Bulldogs off for 25 18. The Maryland Eastern Shore lead is seven. And teams that like to apply pressure, Bill, don't like to be pressured. I know. <laughs> you know, that's one reason why they do it. Yeah. And so South Carolina State, normally the aggressor or the presser, coming out of the game now, Chase Davis is going to come out. And back into the ball game with his um, number 11, that's Cohen Thompson, back in. So it'll be South Carolina State basketball. Six turnovers already by South Carolina State. They got to do a better job of protecting because Brown is playing quite aggressively on uh, defense. Came Gary over to T.J. Madlock. Looks like another 2-3 matchup zone. Rakeem Gary for three. It's off the back of the rim. Rebounded long by... It's number 13. Akinsanya. Yep. Akinsanya with the rebound. Mayawa Akinsanya. Where is he from? He's from L.A. Yep. By way of Nigeria, perhaps. Boils for three. It's oh, good. my goodness. I'm sorry. That's Cohen Thompson for three. Those guys, that's a eight, that's a ten point lead. Twenty eight eighteen. TJ Madlock with the drive, lays it off and missed the lay in. He got fouled. Boy, he did not go down. But boy, he had a good he drive. Made an excellent move there to get to the rack and uh looked like the layup uh, he was he could easily make it, but he'd go there for two free throws. Quickly up off the bench, Jamel Davis. For the Bulldogs. It's probably gonna take Lawrence out. First attempt is up and good by TJ. Yeah, he, Latavia Lawrence comes out. He replaces Latavia Lawrence. So you got Daquan Williams, Rakeem Gary, TJ Madlock, Raquan Brown, and Jamel Davis for South Carolina State. TJ second attempt is up and good. 28-20, Bulldogs got it back to eight. Full court pressure now. Phillips in the backcourt. Gets it over to, to Thompson up the floor now. The Bulldogs boils in the corner with the basketball. Yeah, Hawks easily broke that uh, Bulldog press that time by passing the ball. Phillips will hand over to Anderson. Anderson between the leg dribble on Rakeem Gary. Puts up the shot, threw up a prayer. Goes out of bounds. It's going to be last touch by Maryland Eastern Shore. 28-20. Rashawn Edwards will come into the ball game. And Daquan um, Brown, Rickon Brown will sit down. And the... Uh, Rakeem Gary is going out, too. Who replaced him? Good question, Phil. Oh. Krosky. Krosky. Omar Krosky. Yep. T.J. Madlock in the backcourt over to two, Rashawn Edwards. Edwards gets it to Krosky over to T.J. Madlock. Madlock with the drive. Madlock drew the foul again. Madlock with the foul, and that's going to be on uh, Akinsanya. Madlock has been quite aggressive on uh, these last few possessions for the Bulldogs. Getting to the rack. He didn't get the shots to fall, but he's getting to the line, and he's a really good free throw shooter. That foul is called on Chivo Nugent. They call three, it Tukey. Three for three. So Tukey Nugent with the foul. Madlock makes the bucket. Coming out of the game, his first time out will Phillip. be Deshaun Phillip will come out. Getting the rest. Fritz first break. Greg Anderson back in. I'm sorry, Tukey Nugent back in. Rattles and rolls. Does Madlock's free throw. Back to a six-point game with 5.40 to go here first half. Across the timeline, on Shebel Tuki Nugent. He'll give over to Cohen Thompson. Thompson in trouble. Thompson throws it. 
Somehow I got it to Anderson. The Boyles, Boyles. Shot put up and in. Nice shot by Kevon Boyles. A good pass over the press. It's all oh, Cross. Three point about Cross. It's good. Omar Krosky for three. Two for two from behind the arc for Omar Krosky. My God. 30 to 25 now. The lead is five. Approaching five minutes to go first half. Pass over to Chase Davis is knocked out of bounds. Not Krosky got his hands on it. So Akinsanya will come out. Back into the ball game will be number 22, Nathan Pollard Jr. He was started. 5 0 9 to go first half. Nugent with the basketball. Give over to Thompson. Back over to Nate Pollard Jr. He'll hand over to Nugent. Long three pointer. It's no good. Rebounded by Omar Krosky for South Carolina State. Here come the Bulldogs. Krosky threw it away. And Krosky with the foul. Krosky threw it away and then committed the foul. Unforced error. We talked about that earlier. Make a good pass. You know, you, you don't be in such a big hurry. Make a good pass. That's, that's all the coaches asked him. That's the only third team foul. So that's good for South Carolina State. They'll inbound on the side. Yep. At least uh, we're not getting the early fouls or putting the, the opponents into the bonus so early. Kevon Boyles will inbound. Kevon Boyles, Chase Davis, Tukey Nugent, Cohen Thompson, and Nathan Pollard Jr. for Maryland Eastern Shore. Jamel Davis, Omar Krosky, Daquan Williams, Rashawn Edwards, and T.J. Matlock for South Carolina State. Boyles along the right sidelines. Does so to Tukey Nugent, and he'll handle the basketball. Left side now to Chase Davis. Back over to Thompson. Back over the top of the key to Boyles. Boyles right wing now. Chase Davis. Davis. Three seconds on the shot clock. Pollard. And they're not going to get it off. Great defense by South Carolina yeah, State. Indeed, yeah. The, the, the Hawk bench was yelling to the players, you know, counting it down, but they still didn't get it off. Good defense is stand there by the Bulldogs. Omar Cross game bounce to Rashawn Edwards, and here come the Bulldogs, an opportunity to make this a one-possession game. Indeed. 4.25 to go first half. It's been all Maryland Eastern Shore. Jamel Davis on the baseline. Puts up the shot. It's good. Boy. Jamel Davis baseline drive. He is so good around that basket, man. 30 to 27 now. It's a one-possession game for the Bulldogs. Tukey Nugent across the timeline. Nugent goes to Chase Davis. Davis starts the dribble drive. Uh. Inside pass to Nugent. Put it up and in. A foul. It's going to be on Krosky or either Edwards. Yeah. Seemed like Edwards came over to help. It was Edwards. Edwards gets tagged with a foul. Indeed. Opportunity for a three-point play. Bulldogs have cut it to three. Now can go back to six. The Hawks are doing a good job. Excuse me, Ernest, in passing the interior passes, uh, getting some uh, easy shots for those guys. Nugent, a six-foot senior from Newburgh, New York. Uh, where is Newburgh? Misses the first three throw. Rebounded by Jamel Davis. Over to Rashawn Edwards, and here we come up the floor. Under four minutes to go first half. Edwards, long three-pointer. It's good. <laughs> Rashawn Edwards with the three. Boy. 32-30. Close as we've been in a long time. Indeed. The uh, Bulldogs are shooting the ball quite well. If they could cut down on those unforced turnovers, they may be able to take control of this ball game. Chase Davis with the basketball. Goes right side to keep on Boyles. Boyles, I thought, travel, Bill. He did. Stolen over and knocked out of bounds by Rashawn Edwards, but I thought he traveled. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he moved both feet. That's traveling without dribbling the ball. The first of my been screened up. We used to, we used to call it walking. Walk, walk, you walk, you walk, you walk. You walk. Yeah, tell you. He walked, yeah. man. He walked. Yeah, yeah. 332 to go here in the first half. Ernest Robinson, Bill Hamilton having more fun than we should have. How about that? It's 32 3230. Thir Bulldogs trail by two. We'll be back with more Bulldog basketball on ESPN, WPJK, ESPN Orangeburg. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control of your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank accounts, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problem now by calling the experts at U.S. Tax Shield and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that 
may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. U.S. Tax Shield offers a price protection guaranteed quote to get you protected today. U.S. Tax Shield is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, so call now. 800-687-5192. That's 800-687-5192. U.S. Tax Shield. 800-687-5192. Welcome back to the Smith M. Milton Memorial Center on the campus of South Carolina State. It's 32-30. Maryland needs to show an inbound. Bulldogs, uh, this is as close as they've been most of the night. Since the start of the game. Yeah. Chase Davis will inbound. Over to Boyles. Boyles double team. Bulldogs just bumped him. No call. Back across the floor by himself. Phelps. Oh, my goodness. And Phelps is fouled by T.J. Madlock. And Madlock did check on him. They kind of talked to each other, but um, a yeah. foul, but a good hard he, foul. He, he let him know that, yeah, you know, it wasn't intentional. But South Carolina State is trapping, but they're losing, they're losing the people. The back on the, the, on the, on the back, back side, end. they're in the back end. Uh, and the uh, Maryland Eastern Shore players are picking it up and finding an open man. Deshaun Phelps at the free throw line. First attempt is up, and it's no good. Philp on the season, Bill, is a 54% free throw shot. Oh, no. No surprise. <laughs> Second attempt is up and good. It's good. Full court pressure by Maryland Eastern Shore. Bulldogs, Bulldogs beat, it, three. beat it easily. Into the corner to Krosky. Krosky with a dribble drive off his foot. He's going to get called uh, a foul. Maryland Eastern Shore, but Krosky was a little out, out, of out of control. Yes, he was. They ran him off the three-point line, and he was trying to get to the rim there. You know, he's pretty good around there with that left hand, but uh, he was out of control that time. Krosky on the season, Bill, is a um, 69% free throw shoot. Yeah, he's pretty good. T.J. Matlock will inbound from under own basket. He got to hurry. Gets it to Krosky in the corner. Out front to Jamel Davis over to Rashawn Edwards. Edwards. 3-10 to go first half. Daquan Williams. Daquan inside pass to T.J. T.J. Fade away. It's good. Oh. Boy, he looked good on that one. That's one day Matlock making it happen. It's a one-point game. Indeed. In the front court is Kevon Boyles. Boyles goes baseline to Nathan Pollard out front to Phillip. Phillip top of the key to Pollard Jr. Pollard Jr. starts a drive. Inside pass. <laughs> Further inside laid up an end. Every time one of the Bulldogs come to help on that defense, uh, the Maryland Eastern Shore players are doing a good job in finding an open man. Pressure inside around the basket. Cohen Thompson with the bucket. So it's a 35-32 lead for Maryland Eastern Shore. Jamel Davis inside. Can't get the shot off. Another hell ball. Look like this one ought to be South Carolina State. Kraft and Coach Kraft was upset with no foul call inside. He thought Jamel Davis bumped him before he turned. I tend to agree with him, Bill. I think the Bulldogs got away with one there. Indeed. Yeah, every now and then you get a break like that. T.J. Okay. Madlock inbounds to Ed Oliver Hampton, who's come in. Rashawn Edwards for three. It's off the back of the rim, rebounded long. And out front is Tuka Nugent. Nugent will give over to Phillips. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Three-point Maryland Eastern Shore lead. They led the whole way. Left side now is Tuka Nugent. Goes left baseline to Nathan Pollard, Jr. Pollard, Jr. over to Nugent. Man-to-man -man defense by the Bulldogs. Deshaun Phillips thought about the three. Back out front to Nugent. Nugent, pump fake. Nugent, back over to Phillips. And knocked away. Not one God, second. Yeah. Going to be a shot clock violation anyway. It was only one second left. On the clock, yeah. Crossy got a hand in there and knocked it off for Phillips' uh, knee there. Bulldog defense is slowly starting to force Maryland Eastern Shore into turnovers. Indeed, and that's what you need to do. Rashawn Edwards across the timeline. I see if they can capitalize on this possession. 
Free throw line jumper from Latavian Lawrence is off the rim. Man, it was. It looked good. Yeah, I thought it was going in. <laughs> Phillips come up with the rebound. A minute 20 to go here in the first half. We're down three. And Maryland Eastern Shore wants a timeout. I'm going to talk it over and try and get a good play here. So, with a minute 23 to go, and it looks like this is going to be just a 30 second timeout. So, we're going to keep it right here. But, um. South Carolina State starting to create some problems, Bill. Starting to make life a little bit more difficult yep. for Maryland Eastern Shore. The Bulldogs are battling. You know, uh, they've trailed the whole game. They did get as close as one. Uh, but now, of course, they're down by three. But uh, they have stayed close. Well, you know, we talked about staying attached to teams. That's what you need to do, yeah. You know, you don't want to get down eight, ten points, double digits. And, and if you stay close in the ball game, you feel like, you know, you can make a defensive evidence and go past them. Yeah, lots of time when you have to dig out of a eight or ten point hold, you know, it takes takes so much energy. 35-32 is the score. Maryland Eastern Shore leading South Carolina State by three, as we said before, the Hawks have led the entire game. Jumped out to a 10-2 lead and uh, have held the lead ever since. Ed Oliver Hampton, Omar Krosky, Jamel Davis, Rashad Edwards, and T.J. Matlock for the, for the Bulldogs. Uh, Kevon Thompson, Deshaun Silt for Maryland Eastern Shore with the basketball. The Hawks have it across the timeline. Goes to Deshaun Phillips, left wing. Zone defense by South Carolina State. Left side now is Chase Davis. Free throw line to Tukey Nugent. Back over to Nathan Pollard. Lays it up and in. Pollard with the lay-in. Those oh, guys, that interior passing has just been exceptionally well tonight by Maryland Eastern Shore. 37-32. And in South Carolina State, Tony Madlock wants a timeout. And Yeah, he wants to talk about it because they're getting too many inside baskets. Uh, on when the defense comes to help, they always find the, the open man. we got to find a way to uh, to uh, get that weak side help on defense. So it's a five-point game. It just was, a, was three just a moment ago, that bucket, of course. But well, the Bulldogs in critical possession coming up here with a minute to go here in the first half. As, as you said, they need to stay attached to these Hawks. 37-32. Ernest Robinson, Bill Hamilton, glad to have you with us on WPJK ESPN Orangeburg. If you're out and about on a Saturday afternoon, come on by. It's a lot of exciting basketball here this afternoon, MEAC basketball. If you're at home, go to your computer. You can pull up the game on South Carolina State's website and actually see the game. And hear yours truly and the Hall of Famer uh, as we bring you the play-by-play -play action uh, of South Carolina State basketball. Jamil Davis will inbound. Does so to Ed Oliver Hampton. will give over to Sean Edwards. It was hawked over there by Tukey Nugent. Man-to-man -man defense. Boy, Maryland Eastern Shore changes their defense but almost every time down there in a different, different defense. And, and it's, it's, it's causing a few problems for South Carolina State. Jamel Davis posting up inside. Davis spins. Nothing there. Edwards thought about the three. Now we'll take it. It's up. It's off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Krosky. Krosky had it. Nearly lost it out of bounds. Got it into Jamel Davis. And the uh, Maryland Eastern Shore coach is about to lose his mind over he here. Thought, he, he thought Krosky was out of bounds, but I don't think he was. The yeah, fish was yeah. right there. He yeah. was. Uh, the fish was right there on it. Yeah. On the base. Yeah. <laughs> right under the basket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, so he's asking for an explanation, the coach. Uh, that's coach, the, the explanation that's was Coach Crafted. <laughs> the official could say, I just didn't see it. Coach. Yeah, let it go. I was blocked out. <laughs> hey, he was, he's supposed to appeal to the other official. Good break, good break for South Carolina. Jamel Space. Davis makes the first free throw. Daquan Brown's going to come into the game. Who's going to come out? A little like Cross Klosky. So Daquan's come into the game. Jamel Davis makes a free throw. Yeah, Brown. Four point game. Brown, uh, uh, Brown has provided some uh, good minutes uh, when he's been on the court. Hasn't scored tonight. Jarrell Davis, the second attempt is up and good. So it's back to a three-point game, 37-34. 30 seconds to go. Full court pressure by South Carolina State. Polly gets it over to Tukey Newton across the timeline. 22 seconds on the uh, game clock, like 18 on the shot clock. Over to Chase Davis. Guarded by... Brown. Over to Tuka Nugent on the right wing. Drives on Rashawn Davis. Oh. it up and in. What a nice quick drive. And then with the left hand. Nugent with the drive. Three seconds. Bulldogs going to get a shot off? No. Knocked out of bounds. And that's going to do it for the uh. first half of play here at the Smith-Hammond Middleton Memorial Center on the campus of South Carolina State. Our score, 
The University of Maryland Eastern Shore 39, South Carolina State 34. We'll have more South Carolina State basketball on WPJK ESPN Orangeburg. Prisma Health has OBGYN locations across the Midlands and Upstate, providing advanced care for every stage of a woman's life. Whether it's the first gynecology visit, planning a family, or managing menopause, our compassionate OBGYN specialists are dedicated to helping women keep their busy lives in balance by staying healthy and strong. More expertise for women to help you be your healthiest you. Learn more about our services for women at prismahealth.org slash balance. At Founders Federal Credit Union, we know success is a team effort. We're always cheering for you, side by side, so you can dream big and achieve your goals. Offering products and services that put you in the lead, whether that's helping you buy a car, build your savings, or supporting your community. We're here with the financial support you need. That's teamwork. Score big with Founders Federal Credit Union. Relax with Founders. It's halftime at Orangeburg, South Carolina State trailing Maryland Eastern Shore 39 to 34. And Bill, you know, when you look at this first half, it's amazing how the first half of the women's game kind of mirrors the first half of the, uh, the men's, men's game. game yeah, mirrors the women's game. From the standpoint of us getting behind and getting back into the ball game and having some success, but not able to maintain it. Yeah, and like the women could not get all the way back. It's unfortunate now. For South Carolina State here, they had to have for Jamal Davis uh, 10 points on 4-6 shooting. He's 2 for 2 from the line. Of course, uh, Antonio Madlock has 8 points and no rebounds, which is a surprise for him because he's a good, good rebounding guard, but he does have 2 assists. And, of course, Omar Kroski has 6 points, uh, both coming on 3-pointers. Uh, for Maryland Eastern Shore, uh, Chase Davis, eight points. Uh, he's three or four from the field. And two for two from behind the arch there. And then they have six players. You know, you talk about Bell. They got six players. I mean, three players with six points. Kevon Balls, uh, Deshaun Phillips, and, of course, Corin Thompson. All. Now a fourth player, too, your guy, Nugent. Turk Nugent. So you got four guys with six points, and Chase Davis leading with eight. Real balanced step. And, you know, you talk about one of the keys to South Carolina State, and one of the pluses all year has been T.J. Matlock's ability to get a rebound. I tell you. Running. But because they're playing so tight and they're playing such good defense, that they're not allowing him to knife in and get rebounds. That's right, because, you know, he's one of the leading rebounders on the team from his guard position. You know, he's a good leaper. But Maryland Eastern Shore has done a good job, and, uh, Keeping them off the board this evening, this afternoon. It's halftime here in Orangeburg. Our score, Maryland Eastern Shore 39, South Carolina State 34. We'll have more Bulldog basketball after this timeout. This is SportsCenter. I'm Ed Benkin. Brian Flores is suing the NFL, but he is no longer out of work. The Steelers have hired Flores as a senior defensive assistant. He'll also work as a linebackers coach in Pittsburgh. Flores is suing the NFL for racial discrimination. It's another busy Saturday of college basketball, but not a good day for second right Auburn in Gainesville today. Green with the ball, two seconds left. Green shoots a pass down low. Knocked away by Florida! Knocked away by Florida! The ball game is over! Auburn never got a shot on goal! They never got a shot on goal! As the Gators got a deflection and time ran out, and Florida has upset Auburn today here at the exact Tech Arena. That's Big Hubert on Learfield as the Gators do upset the Tigers 63-62. Number four, Kentucky, a winner over Alabama, 90-81. Number 11, Texas Tech, got by number 20, Texas, 61-55. It was number 12, Illinois, 79. Number 19, Michigan State, 74. Seventh right, Baylor, a winner over TCU, 72-62. And Iowa knocked off number 18, Ohio State, 75-62. The NBA All-Star Weekend continues tonight. Coming up this evening on ESPN Radio, it is All-Star Saturday night featuring the three-point shooting competition and the dunk contest. The All-Star festivities conclude tomorrow night when Team Durant takes on Team LeBron. That game can also be heard here on ESPN Radio. 
The Olympics are wrapping up in Beijing. Three more medals were won by the U.S. today. One a bronze by Elena Myers-Taylor. That of the two in bobsled event. That gives her five medals, making her the most decorated black athlete in Winter Olympics history. The U.S. now has 24 medals, eight of them gold. Norway remains atop the medal table. They have 35. Hey, it's Greedy. Hope you're enjoying the weekend. We got NBA All-Star festivities to talk about when we return, and we turn our attention to the next part of the NBA season. It's going to be critical. We'll see you then. It's Greedy, starting 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to Orangeburg, South Carolina. It's South Carolina State basketball. WPJK ESPN Orangeburg. You know, we're talking about the first half. Maryland Eastern Shore, 5 of 7 from the three-point line. Bulldogs, 4 of 8 uh, from the three-point line. So, really a, a closely contested basketball game to this point. Indeed, the uh, Bulldogs are doing better at the free-throw line. They're 8 of 10 to 4 of 7 from Maryland Eastern Shore. But the Hawks have... Uh, 15 field goals, only 11 for South Carolina State. South Carolina State, of course, Bill talked about the scoring just a moment ago. Omar Kroski with seven points, uh, with seven rebounds. Uh, he's got six points with seven rebounds. The problem for that is Omar Kroski is like your three guy. I, I mean, know. he's like a swing guy. Right. You know, your, your big guys aren't really helping you out. Jamel Davis, Ed Oliver Hampton, and that crowd, they really got to get on the boards. In, in fact, yeah, Davis... Uh, only has one rebound. Dequan Williams only one, and of course Ed uh, Oliver Hampton just two. So, yeah, they got to do. It. They got to get on the boards right and do a better job. They're the big guys. It's halftime here in Orangeburg. Our score: Maryland Eastern Shore 39, South Carolina State 34. We'll have more Bulldog basketball after these messages. Ticket Smarters, glad we're back to holding live events. If you're looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events. All at the very best price. Look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at TicketSmarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on TicketSmarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. TicketSmarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of South Carolina State Athletics. TicketSmarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. I learned that people are just looking for somebody to listen to them. You can't just start cutting somebody's hair and you're going to be quiet the whole time because you're not going to be in business long. <laughs> the South Carolina Education Lottery has provided over $800 million to help students attend technical colleges across our state, investing in a new generation of entrepreneurs just like James. Your passion is our purpose. There was a time when a person's word was enough. A time when a handshake meant something, and integrity really mattered. Farm Bureau Insurance continues to live by these principles. That's our pledge. And it hasn't changed since the day we got started. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. Learn more at scfbins.com. Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to support SC State Athletics. Contact your local agent for all your auto, home, and life insurance needs. All South Carolinians aged five years and older are now eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. For help finding a vaccine location in your area, visit scdhec.gov slash vaxlocator or call 1-866-365-8110. COVID-19 vaccines are free and don't require ID or insurance. Visit scdhec.gov slash vaxlocator or call 1-866-365-8110 to find a vaccine location near you. Welcome back to the Smith Hammond Middle to Memorial Center. We're on the beautiful campus of South Carolina State. The only thing could be prettier than today is if we could get that score turned around, Bill. Bulldogs on the short end of a 39-34 game here at halftime. Yep, Bulldogs have trailed uh, from uh, the outset here. Merlin Eastern Shore jumped out to a 10-2 lead, and they've held that lead. South Carolina State did get as close to one, but uh, Merlin Eastern Shore quickly got a couple of baskets to build that lead back up to uh, a five-point margin here to have. Bill, what's been the difference today that Maryland Eastern Shore is doing from a pressure standpoint 
uh, that other teams have tried to do against South Carolina State. This is the first time that I've seen South Carolina State's offense and guards really a little hesitant about attacking this defense. I think it's the quickness of uh, Merle Neeson Shaw. All of their guys, you know, even, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's his name, Pollard, all those guys are pretty quick, and they've done a good job in switching off even when South Carolina State has double teams and j- trap, they get the ball to the right guy. So they're, they're very good at their passing, and they're quick, and they ball with South Carolina State the entire first half. I guess the question going into the second half now will be is if Maryland Eastern Shore can stay consistent and handle South Carolina State's pressure in the third, in the second, I was going to say third yeah. and fourth quarters, and, in the second half. And, and they're switching defenses so often, I think it's causing some problems there for the Bulldogs as well. I think South Carolina State, they're going to have to get a little bit more aggressive on defense. But you know, the thing about the switching defenses, which I always wonder why more coaches didn't do that, and I guess because I grew up watching Dean Smith and Norm Sloan in the ACC. Yeah. And they did that. I mean, every time down, it was a different defense. Yeah, because you make them to go, you know, if they got a play call against your man-to-man defense, all of a sudden you go to a one, two, two, or two, three, and then they got to find another way. And sometimes it takes them a while to get into Florida offense. So that's what the main reason switching defense is to kind of slow the offense down or even more disrupt the offense. All right, folks, we're a couple of minutes away from the start of the second half. Hope you stick and stay with us because the Bulldogs hopefully are going to come back and get another MEAC win, but we're in trouble right now. Bulldogs trail. Maryland Eastern Shore, 39 to 34. Jernish Robinson and Bill Hamblin on WPJK ESP in Orangeburg. We'll have the start of the second half of today's action right after these messages. The Columbia Metropolitan Airport supports South Carolina State University from takeoff to touchdown. May it be in the sky or on the field, CAE will get the Bulldogs there and back safely and with ease. Be sure to check out all of CAE's nonstop destinations by visiting flycae.com. The city of Orangeburg is proud to be the home of the South Carolina State University Bulldogs. We invite you to come and see us and see what we're all about. Visit beautiful Edisto Gardens and see why we are called the Garden City. Once you get a taste of Orangeburg, you'll be back. The city of Orangeburg wishes Coach Buddy Pugh and the Bulldogs of South Carolina State good luck this season. The city of Orangeburg, a proud sponsor of Bulldog football. Staying healthy is easier when it's convenient. That's why Prisma Health provides easy access to primary care close to where you need it most. With nearly 600 doctors across the Midlands and Upstate, we offer same-day and next-day appointments to fit your busy schedule or virtual visits when you can't make it to our office. More access to exceptional care to help you be your healthiest you. Find a doctor today at prismahealth.org slash healthy. At Founders Federal Credit Union, we know success is a team effort. We're always cheering for you, side by side, so you can dream big and achieve your goals. Offering products and services that put you in the lead. Whether that's helping you buy a car, build your savings, or supporting your community, we're here with the financial support you need. That's teamwork. Score big with Founders Federal Credit Union. Relax with Founders. Welcome back to the Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center on the campus of South Carolina State. Ernest Robinson, Bill Hamilton, South Carolina State basketball as the Bulldogs trail Maryland Eastern Shore 39 to 34. And you know it's going to be interesting to be able to see what Tony Matlock does and, and if um, Coach Jason Kraft of uh, Maryland Eastern Shore is able to do the same thing. You know, one thing Tony Matlock has been able to do all season long, Bill. That is make adjustments at the half, and today he's going to have his work cut out for him to, to get back in his ballgame. In fact, you're right, and that, and hopefully uh, the Bulldogs will be able to do that. I think these first three or four minutes of this uh, second half will kind of tell you what's going to happen. The Bulldogs need to get back in it quickly, and they certainly don't need to let Maryland Eastern Shore build on that lead. Well, we're a few seconds away from the start of the second half. 
Bulldogs wearing the white jerseys, white pants, gone in numerals, blue trim, Maryland Eastern Shore, all clad in burgundy. As uh, burgundy jerseys, burgundy trousers, uh, trousers, gray trim, and of course the shore on the front of the jerseys. And I was talking to Bill just a moment ago. I really did not. I guess I should know because it's Maryland Eastern Shore that is on the coast. Yeah, on yeah. the coast. That's I've it. never been to Princess Anne. Uh, yeah, it's a nice little town. Uh, Does it remind uh, you of Dover or something? Uh, it's not quite as big as Dover. But uh, it's the university, most of uh, the, the community, you know, the university is most of the community. Yeah. And it's, as I said, they're not that far from Salisbury, Maryland, which uh, home of, uh, used to be the home of Campbell Soup Company. Wow. Yeah. Well, well you're I, taking me on a history lesson. <laughs> yes, That's the is. second thing you told me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you told me the girls gave me was something I didn't know about. <laughs> yeah. So for South Carolina State, it's going to be Jamel Davis, Rashawn Edwards, T.J. Madlock. Daquan Williams and Omar Krosky. And Williams need to get on track. Uh, Daquan Williams, he has not scored and only has one rebound in 10 minutes, so he needs to get going. The Bulldogs need his inside scoring and his rebounding. Thompson's going to inbound. Keep on Thompson for Maryland Eastern Shore. Deshaun Phillips, Nathan Pollard Jr. for Maryland Eastern Shore. And keep on Boyles. Phillips goes over to Voiles. Guarded by T.J. Matlock, man-to-man defense. And Maryland Eastern Shore throws it away. They threw the entry pass into Pollard. Aaron pass there. Bulldogs got a chance to uh, now cut in this lead. Rashawn Edwards will walk it up for the Bulldogs. He'll be greeted by Chase Davis in the backcourt. Gets a pick from Jamel Davis. Hey, will give and go. You see, how well, you see how quickly those, those guys switch from Maryland Eastern Shore? Omar Cross getting to T.J. T.J. lays it up and in. Matlock gets the basket off the glass, and it's a three-point game. Good start for the Bulldogs. Uh, they forced to turn over and then capitalize on it. Man-to-man defense by South Carolina State. Chase Davis with the basketball, guarded by Rashawn Edwards. Top of the key to Phillips. Phillips goes over to Pollard on the elbow. No look pass inside, and it's trapped up on the basket, and they call a foul. Oh, no, it looked like they got Rash- Rashawn Edwards on the They're foul. on the foul. And I thought but, he pinned it on the glass. Yeah. Basketball got stuck. So the foul on Phillips. I'm, I'm sorry, Edwards. Edwards, yeah. Chase Davis is at the free throw line. Yeah, Davis. Break for the Bulldogs. Davis uh, had eight points at the half there for the Hawks with their lead score. And he just added to it. Chase Davis on the season bills averaging 7.2 points a game. He's an 81% free throw shooter. Wow. Tenth point of the night. 41-36, back to a five-point lead. Jamel Davis will inbound to Rashad Edwards. And here come the Bulldogs across the timeline. Double team coming, gets it over to Jamel Davis, back over to Rashawn. Rashawn dribbles away from pressure. Now goes left side to T.J. Matlock, goes left wing to Omar. Omar Krosky with the basketball. With the right hand, back to the left. No look pass inside to Jamel Davis. Davis put it down, got tied up, and he's going to get... Tied up with the jump ball. Nice defense by Nathan Pollard Jr. But Jamel yeah. Davis, Bill, when you're 6'9 and you bring it down. The, you, the, the little guys are going to grab it. The coaches teach you to not bring it down. You know, you're 6'9. Yeah, you don't need to bring the ball down. TJ Matlock will inbound. Matlock lobs it up the clock to uh, Davis and got a foul inside. It looked like they got, did they get Phillips on there? Yeah, they got on five is the first time Phillips. Yeah, they got Phillips on that. Too aggressive there. So the Bulldogs will inbound once again, but South Carolina State was a little shaky on that inbound. I tell you. 41 36 are score, 18 to go. TJ gets it to Daquan Williams. Williams tries to put it on the floor. No, and he gets tied up with the foul. You can't put it on the floor when you're inside. He did the same thing that Jamal Davis did the possession before. I had a coach one time, Bill, <laughs> that he came. I don't know where he came from. He came from someplace other than Bennettsville. Okay. From. <laughs> but he called that the Bennettsville dribble because everybody, all our players, as soon as they got the ball, first thing is put, put it, it on the ground. It, yeah. No matter, under the basket, yeah. you go to dribble it. They call it the Bennettsville dribble. 41-36, five-point Maryland Eastern Shore. Uh, Stolen by T.J. Madlock. Matlock up the floor. Matlock nearly traveled, and it knocked away. 
Bill, I think he did try. I'm not a foot slid. I think he got away with one that time because he tried to stop and the foot kept moving. I don't know what kind of <laughs> shoes TJ's got on, but there's skid marks on the floor because they did not stop like they're supposed to stop. And what's the official discussion? <laughs> Might discuss that, the fact that that foot slid. It's oh, too late. It's too late now. They missed the call. You can't go back. <laughs> now, Bill, is that a, can you not go back? Is it, it just happened. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I know the NBA. You can do it in the last what two minutes. Uh, in college basketball, I, Bulldogs. Sure. Bulldogs keeping the basketball. Yeah, forget, yeah. forget our conversation, okay, folks. <laughs> Out front, Ed Oliver Hampton over to Sean Edwards. Bulldogs down five. Edwards with a jumper. It's good. Rashawn Edwards with the jumper makes it a three-point game. That's Edwards' uh, seventh point of the night. 18-13 to go. Up the floor for the. That's Pollard. to sure. Pollard into the corner. Chase Davis for three. It's no good. Rebounded by Ed Oliver Hampton. And Hampton, just like we just <laughs> talked about, Hold folks. Up. Yeah, he's six. <laughs> Hold six the eight. ball up. And he took it down below his waist. And they tied and him up. But fortunately, the Bulldogs got the ball. Well, Eastern Shore, their, their guards are very aggressive. Anytime you bring that ball down, they slapping at it and grabbing at it. Rashad Edwards across the timeline for the Bulldogs. Gets a pick from Ed Oliver Hampton. Goes right now. Fade away from three. Oh, boy, you almost got to make that. You coach them, what you taking out? Fade away, three. It's no good. Rebounded by Rashawn, by LaShawn Phillips. And Phillips up the floor for Maryland Eastern Shore. Deshaun Phillips with the basketball. Guarded by Rashawn Edwards. Gets the pick from Nate Pollard. No look pass off the foot of a Bulldog. They call a foul. They call a foul on T.J.? Looks like on T.J. Malik, he did 2-0. Let's see what they put up. Inbounding will be Deshaun Phillips. And then uh, Jamal uh, Davis with a foul. Two quick fouls there. And now Daquan Brown comes up. He'll take out Omar Krosky. Oh, now they call it on 12 White. Who is 12 White? Oh, Krosky. Yeah, that's Krosky's third player. That's why they had to take him out. 41-38. Ashawn Phillips trying to inbound. Knocked away by T.J. Madlock. Boy, did he? I don't see how there could be any time left from, from the inbound. I, yeah. With the knockaway, that would have been the fifth second. I, I thought... I, I, I thought that was a, he got a long uh, that was a long count. They looking at it. You, Bill, I thought you were gonna say a long snap count. <laughs> <laughs> Deshaun Phillips is gonna inbound from under the Maryland Eastern Shore basket. They they, they reset the shot clock. Uh, yeah, because it shouldn't have been. Uh... Phillips trying to inbound again. And now they got oh. a foul call. Oh, man. That's going to be on Ed Oliver Hampton. All we had to do is play good defense, not foul, because I think he was in trouble again. That's the fifth team foul on South Carolina State. Already. Phillips. Inbounds off Pollard. Back over to Phillips. Boyle has it in the left corner. Boyle. Crossover dribble on Jamel Davis. Blocked and knocked out of bounds. What a job good. by Jamel Davis. Play great defense. Slap that away up. All the way. He never gave up on the play. That would have been in the crowd if there were a crowd over there. Indeed. Deshaun Phillip will inbound. Again. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Top of the key. Shot is up and no good. Rebounded by Brown. Gives over to Edwards. Up the floor, TJ. No look inside. Slammed by Omar Cross. I mean, sorry, Omar Cross. Ed Oliver Hampton. Yeah, great delivery there by... Uh, T.J. Madlock to Ed Oliver Hampton, and he slammed it down, brought the crowd to their feet. It's a one-point game. Chase Davis, the runner, is no good. Off the front of them, rebounded by Edwards. Ah, oh, they called Edwards for a foul. Oh, no, they, maybe they got Jamal Davis. They got Jamal Davis. Oh, my goodness. Bulldogs right there with 16.55 to but, go. But look at the fouls. You know, they're going to be in the bonus, you know, with the 12 minutes to go here. It's 16.55 left. Mayawa Akinsanya comes into the game. But I've already committed five fouls in only uh, four, less than four minutes. I told you that's the same thing that the women do, the same thing. Yeah, and it's going to put them in the bonus so early. 
And it's not like with women's basketball, you got a quarter, you, you get a restart. That's right. And this series, you got to play 12 minutes with them in the bonus. Just in case you're interested, Maryland Eastern Shores, a team, shoots 64% from the free throw line. And that's not bad as a team. That's not bad at all. Devon Phillips, inbounds. Way out front to Thompson. Back over to Chase Davis. Back out front to Phillip now. Deshaun Phillip. Long three-pointer. It's good. Nearly got a foul on that. Wow. 44-40. Maryland Eastern Shores lead back up to four. Deshaun Edwards with the basketball. <laughs> Left wing now to TJ. Left side is Daquan Brown. Brown dribbles towards the top of the key. Back over to Edwards. Right side to TJ. TJ back over to Edwards. Thought about the three, but that's Steph Curry range. It's going to be a foul inside. Looks on, like, that's Phillips again? <clears throat> no, I think it's on number two. That's oh, number, number Chase two. Davis. Okay, number two. That's Tuka Nugent. No, that's Chase Davis. Chase Davis. Yeah. That's their, that's their fourth team foul. TJ Matlock, the inbound. Lobs it up to Ed Oliver Hampton. Lays it up and in. Good. Good good assist there by uh, T.J. It's a two-point two game, 44-42. Define it all for Hampton streaking to the glass there. Boy, you just get the feeling that Maryland Eastern Shore is barely holding on. Chase Davis puts the shot, fake back out front to the, uh, Deshaun Phillips. Back over to Akinsaya. Phillips back over to Boyles. Boyles puts up a three. It's good. Big shot what? from T-Bone Boyles. 47-42, extends that lead back out to five. Boy, those Eastern Shore guards, they don't need uh, much much room to get off the big basket. T.J. Madlock with the basketball. Phillips goes right side to Daquan Brown, into the corner to Ed Oliver Hampton for three. That's nowhere near close. Uh, yeah. Comes up empty, air ball, Chase Davis with the basketball. Up off the bench is Daquan Williams. Right side now is Phillips. Give over to Kevon Boyles. Boyles. Crossover dribble. Boyles, 17-footer. It's rattles. It's tapped out. Rebounded by T.J. Matlock. Matlock gets fouled. And on the foul, Akinsanya. Mayawa Akinsanya. Good rebound there by T.J. It's 47 for Maryland Eastern Shore. 42 for South Carolina State. There's a timeout on the floor. 15.05 remaining. We'll have more. Bulldog basketball. After this time out on ESPN Radio, 1580 AM, 92.9 FM. If you have ever thought about remodeling your bathroom but were worried it would take too long or cost too much, then stop worrying. Right now, Jacuzzi Bath Remodel has designed a collection of high-quality custom products and perfected the one-day remodeling experience so you can enjoy your new bathroom faster than ever before. It's a worry-free bath remodel from the most trusted brand name in the business, Jacuzzi. A jacuzzi bath system fits in your existing tub space. It's a no-mess installation with an amazing style selection, factory-certified installers, and a limited lifetime warranty. Call 800-717-4599. That's 800-717-4599. Right now and get 50% off installation with no interest and no payments for 12 months. Replace that old bathtub today with a walk-in shower for a safer bathing experience. If you have lived in your home for over 15 years, it's time to remodel your bathroom. For a virtual or in-home appointment, Call 800-717-4599. That's 800-717-4599. 800-717-4599. Welcome back to the Smith Hammond Milton Memorial Center. South Carolina State Trailing Maryland Eastern Shore 47-42. Maryland Eastern Shore led by Chase Davis with 10 points. Keep on Boyles with 9 and Deshaun Phillips with 9. What balance scoring for the Hawks. South Carolina State's got uh, Tony Madlock, TJ Madlock with 10, Jamel Davis with 10, Deshaun Edwards with 7. The scoring. It'll be full court pressure by Maryland Eastern Shore. TJ Matlock will inbound. All night and just can't seem to catch up to these Hawks. Under 15 minutes to go here in the basketball game. Jamel Davis will hand over to Daquan Brown. Back over to T.J. Madlock. Madlock will start a drive into the corner. Edwards for three. It's in and out. Rebounded by <laughs> Phillips. Outlet up the floor to Boyles. Boyles. The basket has not been kind to the Bulldogs. Uh, Tuka so Nugent back into the ball game. Nugent. 
Picks up his dribble. Goes over left side to Chase Davis. Back out front to Sean Phillips. Phillips. Akinsanya will hand over to Tukanuja. I can see they don't want him carrying the ball much. Long three-pointer is short. Rebounded long for Sean Edwards. Edwards. Back over to T.J. Matlock. Matlock lays it up and in. It took every corner of the rim before it went in. That's part of what I call the Oscar Robinson bounce roll everything. 47-44 now. Bulldogs to lead three. Three, yep. Chase Davis with the basketball. Starts to drive on Matlock. Lost it, went out of bounds. Nobody touched it. It'll be South Carolina State basketball. So the Bulldogs can tie it to one or tie, get over the tie with a three. Yes, indeed. Mike Mintz will come into the game. Coming out. Well, what we thought. Somebody's got to come Dequan out. Dequan Williams went in. Chase Davis was coming out. And Coach said, no, he didn't want it. He wanted him to come out, but he has to stay in now. So Rashawn Edwards will bring it up across the timeline for the Bulldogs. Under 14 minutes to go. Right side is Daquan Brown. Back over to Rashawn Edwards at the top of the key. Right side is Brown. Back out front to Edwards. Edwards starts to drive. Edwards into the corner to Daquan Brown. Brown puts up the runner. It's in and out. Rebounded by Williams. Recovered by T.J. Matlock. Got his first rebound and drew the foul from Chase Davis. Or from the, uh, Phillip. Wow. So T.J. got a rebound finally. Brown shots, you know, so that, that rim has not been carried to the Bulldog shooters t- tonight because we've had, I mean, this afternoon, they've had so many opportunities where the ball has gone deep down in the ceiling and then it will come out. That is the fifth team foul on Maryland Eastern Shores. So they equal South Carolina State now. So they have both teams with uh, five fouls, uh, two more to go. And, uh, 47-45, Maryland Eastern Shore lead is three. And... T.J. Madlock starts to drive. Madlock off the glass, goes in and out, and rebounded by Akinsanya. And it's going to be a foul on Daquan Williams. Number 50. I'm, sorry, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Brown. No, they did call him Daquan Williams. I guess it was right the first time. Like, yeah, number five. five. 47-44. 13-25 to go. Bulldogs <laughs> haven't been able to get even it's, it's, since we started. I'll tell you, it's a long climb. It seems like they just can't seem to get all the way up the hill. Kevon Boyles into the corner to Chase Davis. Davis has it stolen by Daquan Brown. Taps it over to Daquan Williams. Stolen by Kevon Boyles. Akinsanya puts up the shot, and T.J. Madlock calls him to miss it. God. Opportunity for the Bulldogs. Looked like they had a clean steal. All of a sudden, Maryland Eastern Shore got a hand in there, and now end up going to the free throw lines. Mayawa Akinsanya. That is the seventh team foul against the Bulldogs. That's the bonus to rest that away. Akinsanya at the free throw line. 50% on the season. Well, this is the first one. And if he makes this one, he'll get his average. <laughs> He's six seven, Senior. A real leap for two. From L.A. Long way from home. Second attempt is good. Nathan Pollard Jr. will come into the game for Arkansania. 48-44. It's a four-point game. Bulldogs need a basket. Full-court pressure by Maryland Eastern Shore. T.J. Madlock back over to Rashawn Edwards, and the Bulldogs break the press. Under 13 minutes to go here from Orangeburg. Top of the key is Jamel Davis. Davis starts to drive at the free throw line. Davis back out front to Edwards. Right side is TJ. TJ stops, 18-footer. It's off the back of the rim. Fought for, rebounded by Maryland Eastern Shore. Up the floor now is Chase Davis. Davis. Cut off there by uh, Rashawn Edwards. Edwards. Back over to Deshaun Phillips. 12 and a half to go in the game. Bulldogs trail by four. Phillips will give over to Tukey Nugent. He's checked back in. Baseline pass to Chase Davis. And Davis ran into Daquan Brown. Daquan um, Williams. Williams, yeah. And I but, thought at the least they would call a, a travel but not call a foul. So Daquan Williams took one in the jaw. He got the shoulder the, in the jaw. Yeah, he got the brunt of that uh, collision there. Chase and, Davis is at the free throw line. He's a freshman guard out of uh, uh, 
A Cokey, uh, Maryland. Have you ever heard of that, Bill? A yes, Kokie? I have. Yeah, that's uh, that's not too far from Baltimore. So you, well, I, yeah. I know you heard of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So Daquan Brown and Daquan Williams will come out. Oh, Daquan Brown and Raquan Williams will come out. No, Raquan Brown and Daquan Williams. You always Morgan or Howard. Always they're gonna have somebody from a Cokey. Second free throw is up and good. Back to a six-point Bulldog deficit. 50 to 44. Uh, Coming back into the game for Maryland Eastern Shore. That is number 15, Glenn Anderson. He'll be at a guard position. Full court pressure. T.J. Matlock gets it in to Omar Krosky. Back over to T.J. He'll hand over to Rashawn Edwards. Maryland Eastern Shore backs off back, pressure. Yep. 12 minutes to go here from Orangeburg. 50 to 44, Bulldogs down six. They're in that man-to-man defense now. Edwards. Goes top of the key to TJ. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Kroski starts to drive, fade away. It's going to be short. Ball for rebounded somehow by Jamel Davis. Davis' uh, shot is blocked. Uh, rebounded by Tuki Newton, and here comes Maryland. Here comes the uh, uh, Boston Maryland Eastern Shore. Bulldog Davis gets the offensive rebound, but could not convert on the putback. Nugent hands over to Chase Davis. He'll hand over to Anderson. Out front now is Tuki Nugent. Nugent with the drive throws it up, missed, and last touch by T.J. Madlock. Raheem Gary will come into the game for Rashawn Edwards. Bulldogs need to stay close here. You know, this six-point lead could turn into an eight- or nine-point. 11.27 to go here in the basketball game. Our score, Maryland Eastern Shore 50, South Carolina State 44. We'll have more Bulldog basketball after these messages. Ticket Smarters, glad we're back to holding live events. If you're looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at TicketSmarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on TicketSmarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. TicketSmarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of South Carolina State Athletics. TicketSmarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. There was just a lack of black women, business owners, entrepreneurs, creatives. Growing up, I didn't see that. I figured out that I wanted to be a photographer for women of color. I found my niche and I'm sticking to it. Each year, the South Carolina Education Lottery raises millions of dollars for scholarships and grants that help students prepare for their dream career, just like Kristen. Your passion is our purpose. Welcome back to the Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center on the campus of South Carolina State. Our score, University of Maryland Eastern Shore 50, South Carolina State 44. And Bill, the Bulldogs just can't seem to get over the hump. I tell you, they've been this front of uh, up here calm uh, all afternoon, and they just can't, as you say, they can't seem to get take over. Inbound will be Greg Anderson. Anderson hawked by Akeem Gary, who's checked in. They give it in to Nate Pollard. Pollard gets Omar uh uh, Krosky, I'm sorry, that is Ed Oliver Hampton off his feet. And Bulldogs come away with it. Matlock, good job inside by Ed Oliver Hampton. Yep. As Mer- as, uh, Pollard got a couple opportunities in there close, couldn't get it to drop. Point blank. Latavian Lawrence is back in the game. Back over to Rakeem Gary. Gary out front, over to T.J. Matlock. Matlock inside to Ed Oliver Hampton. Uh. Ed Oliver Hampton can't get up the shot. He's fouled by Pollard inside, but a good pass by uh, T.J. Matlock. Yeah, he found him wide open there. And, uh, the defensive the player for number 22 for that was Pollard. He made a good recovery, but he committed the foul. Ed Oliver Hampton at the free throw line. Oh, Ed Oliver Hampton's got six points on the night. Oh, they call it on the floor, so oh. he won't be going to the line. Bulldogs, Bulldog ball. Uh, so Deshaun Phillip will come back in the game bound. for yep. uh, Greg Anderson. Glenn Anderson. Yeah, Phillips has had a good nine. Four assists, nine points, four assists. He's had a good night. T.J. Matlock lobs it inside to Ed Oliver Hampton. Ed Oliver Hampton put it on the ground. T.J. Matlock got the rebound, put it back up and in. How did he do that? <laughs> under the, looked like he was too far under the basket. But 50 think, to 46 now. It's a four-point game. Bulldogs game. needed that. Good follow there by T.J. Matlock. Deshaun Phillip across the timeline. 
I am sure Jason Crafton goes, how in the hell? Bulldogs going to his zone. Top of the key now is Tuka Nugent. Based on the power, that's for the Nugent. Right side, Chase Davis into the corner. This is Mensa for three. It's no good. Ball for oh, rebounded Paula. by Powell. No look inside. Chase Davis. Davis puts up the shot. It's blocked. Davis again puts up another shot. He missed it. It's rebounded by Omar Kroski, who finally, I thought got foul. Finally, the Bulldogs. Gets it over T.J. Matlock, and here come the Bulldogs. T.J. forces the issue, gets it blocked. Rebounded by Tukey Nugent. Up the floor to Phillips, and Phillips had it knocked away, but I thought that was a clean knock away, but it's they not. Call it's a foul. foul. That's going to be on Kroski, and that's going to be about his fourth. The ninth, ninth of foul there on the Bulldogs. One and one, now, but it was probably a shooting foul. Raekwon Brown quickly up off the bench. Yeah, Kroski, 10 minutes left, and he's got to sit. His fourth personal foul. Six on the Bulldogs. I mean, nine. nine. On the yeah, and there have been a double bonus on the next. And South Carolina State has not even reached the bonus. There are only six fouls there on the Hawks. Yep, first attempt is up and good. 51-46. Wholesale substitution now coming back in. Yeah, Worlds is coming back into the ball game. Cohen Thompson's coming back in, and so is Mayawa Akinsanya is back in the game. And the free throw will be Deshaun Phillip once again. 51-46 is a five-point lead. Second attempt is up and good. Jamel Davis just took one to the head. My goodness. Ten minutes to go here. 52-46, the Bulldogs trail by six. Rakeem Gary. Goes left side to Brown, hands over to T.J. Madlock. Madlock goes left wing now to Jamel Davis. Davis drives the baseline, spin move, and they're going to be fouled. Tukey Nugent tried to pick his pocket, but they're going to say he reached in with the foul. So that'll be the sixth personal foul against Maryland Eastern Shore. That's one and one. That's number seven. So Jamel Davis has a chance to, to convert a couple from the stripe here. Yeah, they called it this now one and one for the Bulldogs. I'll look first before I tell you, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Davis's free throw attempt is up. And that good. is good. He's a 65% free throw shooter on the season. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, he made that one. He needs another one. 52-47, 9.52 remaining. Still time for the Bulldogs. Davis, the second one's off the rim, rebounded by Phillips, knocked away. Maryland Eastern Shore somehow comes up with it. And the guy with the basketball reaches up. Yeah, he's, on the, he's on the floor. But Bill Phillips hadn't gotten up yet, and <laughs> took him through his back. He was still on the floor, but he got up. Yeah. Boils with the basketball. He'll hand over to Tukey Nugent. Nugent drives the right side of the baseline, lobs it up. Akintaya didn't know what to do with it. And this is a shot inside. It wasn't expected. It wasn't a really good pass, lob hit away, but he, good, he doesn't seem to be the guy that can yeah, do that anyway. Yeah, good break for South Carolina State. They got a chance to cut further into this lead. It's a five-point lead, 52-47. Rakeem Gary with the basketball. Rakeem Gary back over to T to um, Jamel Davis. Missed a short <laughs> shot inside. Throws it out front. T.J. Madlock somehow comes up with it. Madlock on the left baseline. Matlock with the drive. Over to Jamel Davis. Davis puts it up and in. Jamel Davis on the drive. The assist from TJ. TJ is having a real good all-round game except on the boards. 52-49. He's catching up on the boards. Um. It's catching up. Good. Yes, he is. I can sign you. We'll hand over to Phillips. Phillips thought about the three. We'll drive on to Colin Brown. Passes out front. Long shot put up by Thompson. In. Oh. Oh. And it's rebounded by Melanie Easton. Sure, they missed the layup inside. Last touch by... By Maryland Eastern Shore. That, that, oh, oh. That, that re, oh. <laughs> Boy, they had two good looks right there inside, and neither shot went down. 52-49 now. And the Bulldogs got a chance to get even closer. Maryland Eastern Shore's lead is 3-8-25 and counting. Rakeem Gary bringing it across the timeline. Rakeem out front between the leg dribble. Gets a pick from Ed Oliver Hampton. Behind the back. Now goes left side to TJ. TJ drives the free throw line. Tries to throw it further in five. Ed Oliver Hampton gets the bucket and the foul. Some, did, some kind of way. He got he got in a crowd. He caught the ball. That's a sign of good hands. TJ Madlock with the pass. I thought that was a, uh, yeah, I thought everybody a was, pass. Everybody was slapping at the ball. I didn't think it was a good pass, too. But some kind of way 
in off of Hampton with those good hands. He grabbed it and put it in. 52-51. Now he can tie the game. And it is no uh, good. Boy. Missed the free throw. 8 0 5 to go here in the game. We're down but, a point. Yeah, that's the closest. It would have been to within one earlier. Phillip with the basketball. Goes left side to Chase Davis. Back over to Phillip. Phillip. Back over to Chase Davis. Long shot put up. No good. Fall forward and goes out of bounds of Maryland Eastern. Oh! They got it caught. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I thought they made a mistake that time. But they hit. He appealed to the other official. So with 7.52 to go here in the basketball game, our score, Maryland Eastern Shore 52, South Carolina State 51. We'll have more Bulldog basketball after this time now. Anyone who has ever needed self-storage knows what a hassle it can be. You have to rent or borrow a truck and then find someone to help you move your stuff. And let's face it, moving furniture and heavy items without damaging them isn't easy. Renting the unit is worse. The hidden fees and admin costs are scarier than the dingy facilities you're leaving your stuff in. Why not use Closet Box instead? Closet Box is self-storage without leaving home. They'll pick up your belongings, store them securely, and bring any item back when you need it. The best part? Unlike traditional self-storage, you only pay for what you store. No paying for unused storage space. Closet Box's background check storage movers are licensed, bonded, and insured and will take care of all of the heavy lifting. Closet Box's local storage centers are temperature controlled and monitored 24-7. Closet Box has an A-plus rating from the BBB. Call 877-233-5696 now for the season's best rates. Get $50 off first month storage using code RADIO50. That's 877-233-5696. 877-233-5696. Welcome back to the Smith Hammond Middleton Memorial Center. 7.52 to go in this one. It is Maryland Eastern Shore 52, South Carolina State 51. For, Bull, for the Bulldogs, Hakeem Gary, TJ Matlock in the backcourt, Daquan Brown, Jamel Davis, and Ed Oliver Hampton up front. Inbounding will be Deshaun Phillips. Phillips. Inbounds it into the backcourt to Chase Davis. Davis starts the dribble drive. Davis lays it up, misses the layup. It is regrounded by Brown. Here come the Bulldogs. Can take the lead with a bucket. They give it over to T.J. Madlock. He'll go over to Rakeem Gary. And here we go with seven and a half to go in the game. Gary handling the basketball. Bulldogs have never led. Inside Jamel Davis. Davis. 17-footer. It's short. Rebounded by Ed Holliver Hampton. Hampton with the basketball. We'll start over and go out front for Rakeem Gary. 7-15 to go in the game. Reset the offense. 52-51. Maryland Eastern Shore. Rakeem Gary. Stars the dribble drive. Long three-pointer. It's off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Brown. And Brown is foul. Rakeem Gary. I took it. A shot two feet behind where Steph Curry would shoot it. I tell you. That looked good for me. <laughs> but... But it, it, it did not fall. Not a, it did not fall. <laughs> the Bulldogs now have a chance to uh, take their first lead of the ball game if Brown can convert both of the free throws here. Raquan Brown at the free throw line. First shot is up, and it's good. Bulldogs tied up. 52-52, first time we've been tied since 0-0. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Kevon Boyles goes out. Tuki Nugent goes in. Bulldogs can take their first lead with 7.08 to go here. And it's been an up here climb. Rick Hahn shot us in the air, and it's good. Bulldogs yeah. take the lead at 7.08 to go in their ball wow. 53-52. It's been an up here climb all night, all afternoon. They finally took the lead. Thompson with the basketball over to Pollard. Huh? Back over to, to um, Phillip. He'll hand over to Chase Davis. Davis starts to drive. Left side now is Nugent. Nugent with the drive. Nugent has a knock away. Got his own rebound and put back up and in. I don't what a foul. believe it. Nugent got a shot blocked. got it back and threw up a prayer, and he got fouled, and it went in. Boy, that's strict. That, that determination, man. He is battling in there. He's the smallest guy on the court. <laughs> Tukey Nugent. Small, Don Shevel, Tukey small, Nugent. Smallest guy on the they court. They list him as six feet tall. Baby. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Free throw is up and good. I'm 5'9". He, ca- he can't even look me in the eye. <laughs> 55-53. <laughs> Bulldogs lead by two. Hey, but when I was SID, if a guy wanted me to listen for certain night, I'd do it too. <laughs> <laughs> Six and a half to go in the ball game. Bulldogs down two. T.J. Matlock goes right side of Rakeem Gary for three. It's off the front of the rim. Rebounded by T.J. T.J., 17 foot is blocked and drew the foul. T.J. got the rebound. Put the shot back up, got the foul from Phillip, Sean Phillips. Phillips needs to be careful there. He to, to, he needs to be careful. So they were looking at uh Madlock will go to the free throw line. You don't want to hurt your team with a tech, so he needs to be careful. So now both teams in a double bonus. 55-53. First attempt is up and good by TJ. Well, Sean Edwards will come in for Rakeem Gary. Rakeem had a couple of good looks, uh, just couldn't get it. But that's, you, that's his shot. Yep. He's a step Curry type guy. <laughs> just couldn't get him to go now. T.J. Madlock. Second attempt is up and times the game. 55-55, 6 remaining. Back where we started. A new ball game. Up the floor, Pollard. Back over to Tukey Nugent. He'll hand over to Sean Phillip. Bulldogs will go man-to-man. Maryland Eastern Shore wants to spread it out. Here comes Phillip. He'll hand over to Nugent. Nugent, back over to Phillip. Long three-pointer. It's off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Jamel Davis. Up to Edwards. Across the timeline. Edwards over to Davis. Davis. Thought about the three, but my goodness, he was at St. Matthews. He was going to shoot it. He goes back over to Edwards. I was hoping he wouldn't shoot that one. Edwards with the basketball. Guarded over there by Thompson. Baseline pass to Jamel Davis. Davis inside, puts the shot up. No good. Fought for, rebounded by Pollard Jr. Davis, 5.35 to go. Davis got inside right where he wanted to, just couldn't convert. Left side now, Thompson with the basketball. He'll hand over to Tukey Nugent. Inside pass to Pollard Jr. Pollard Jr. posting up on Ed Oliver Hampton. Missed the shot, Ed Oliver Hampton pulls down the rebound. And here come the Bulldogs. T.J. Matlock up the floor. Chance to take the lead again. T.J. Out front, T.J. With the drive inside, passes it to Davis. Davis got fouled by Cohen Thompson. And Jamel Davis will go to the free throw line and can give the Bulldogs our largest lead of the game if he makes both of them. Indeed. Bulldogs have been battling all night. They're earnest enough. Took a one-point lead, but they're even right now. We'll see what happens from here. Jarrell Davis at the free throw line, 5.09 remaining. First attempt is up and good. Off the bench, Kevon Boyles. And also back in the ball game for Maryland Eastern Shore, that is uh, Mayawa Akinsanya. So Akinsanya in on the low post. He'll replace Pollard. I'm sure that's a defensive thing. Shot up, and it's off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Akinsanya. He taps it over to Phillip. Bulldogs have a one-point lead with five minutes to go. Deshaun Phillip will go right side to Akinsanya. Give, give over to Tukey Nugent. Nugent out front. Passes over to Boyles. Boyles. <coughs> Boyles hawked over there by Ed Oliver Hampton. Boyles now. To Akinsanya, he can't control it. He just doesn't have the hands. You can tell, Bill, he's a defensive guy. Yes, indeed. And yeah. Pollard is the offensive guy. Yep. And Akinsanya just, I mean, he doesn't have the hands. So the turnover will go to South Carolina State. Pollard Jr. probably just needed a break to get ready for the stretch. Yeah, because he's been playing pretty hard all night. <clears throat> it gives over to T.J. Matlock, and he will walk it up the floor with 440 remaining. Bulldogs lead by a point. Crucial possession Looks for... Like they want to double-team T.J. They go top of the key now to Ed Oliver Hampton. Left side to Daquan Brown. Lays it up and in. And a quick Daquan move. Brown. Raquan Brown with the lay-in. What a quick move there by Brown. Surprise. I think he surprised Brown needs to show defense. A timeout on the floor with 4.23 remaining. Yep. South Carolina State 58. Maryland Eastern Shore 55. And, Bill, I will say... I, you know, I never question a coach, because I'm no coach, but Jason Crafton kind of got caught in between a rock and a hard place when he got Paula Jr. out of the yeah. game. And then, you know, I can tell you, just, can you yeah. just he's offensively, a, he's he, just a liability. Yeah, he's more a defensive guy. Well, 
I thought it was a good time out there by Coach Kraft. Oh, yeah. You know, three-point lead. You talked about staying attached. Stay really, there you, you go. Really he, wants, stay attached. he wants to stay attached. Want to get a good play call here and try to cut in this Bulldog lead. I hope South Carolina State can continue to play the good defense. Bulldogs leading 58-55. And, folks, as strange as it might sound, <laughs> our largest lead of the game. In fact, it's been an uphill climb. All afternoon for South Carolina State. Took his first lead of about three minutes ago or less, and uh, now up by three. 4.23 in the inning. Tony Matlock's got to be happy with his crew from the standpoint of obviously not a great game offensively for the Bulldogs, but the Bulldogs right. have stayed with it, and their defense has put them in a position to come away with a win. And exactly, yeah, they have uh, it's been an uphill climb, uh, a struggle all night. But as you said, uh, you know, I think was the biggest lead the Hawks had, eight points. Was it eight? I, 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 yeah, I think it was eight. I think they led by the Bulldogs, Yeah, the Bulldogs have been able to kind of, uh, they, they never got down by ten at all. No, no, they didn't. No. It seemed like every time Merrill Lisa sure was threatening to, you know, to blow the game open, South Carolina State would come up with a good play. 423 remaining, but folks, if you're here or you're, you're listening to the broadcast, you can kind of get the feeling if you're here that Maryland Eastern Shore now didn't push the panic button just yet, Bill, but they're kind of teetering. Yeah, and the good, that's what I said, that's what I thought, of course, Jason Crafter made a good time out there to try to get his guys uh, back grounded. Phillip with the basketball goes over to Chase Davis on the other side of the floor. Davis dribbles towards the right now, gives it to uh, to Phillip, and Phillip is going to travel with the basketball, slit the foot. And that was just not a good. Uh, yeah, he made it. He made a move in there, but uh, Ed Oliver Hampton was right there, played good defense on him, forced a turnover. Now he needs to show now. Want to pick up full court? T.J. Madlock over to Rashawn Edwards. It was back over to T.J. Madlock. Bulldogs Cross over the, the break timeline. Play. Four minutes to go. Bulldogs lead by three. A basket here would be big for South Carolina State. T.J. Matlock behind the back dribble, 17 footers up. It's off the back of the rim, tapped up, rebound wow. by Allen Easton Shore. I can sign you. That was over the rebound. If that had fallen, that would have given Bulldogs a really nice cushion. Over to Royals. Royals thought about the three. He and will take the three. And he uh, hit it. Wow, Whoa. what a shot. Keep My on Boyles. What a wow. shot. Keep on Boyles with the three. I tell you. We're tied at 58. Three and a half minutes to go here in the basketball game. That's a five-point swing. Bulldogs could have been up by five. Nice tie. It was into Jamel Davis. Davis driving on Boyles. Boyles falls down. Davis lost the football, lost the basketball. Went to put the shot up and got fouled by Tukey Nugent. And Boyles wondering what's going on. Yeah, Davis made a good move there. Some with the ball, but was able to get the foul. This is the final under four minutes. Uh, media timeout. So we're going to take our last timeout with 321 to go in the ball game. We're tied at 58. Ernest Roberts and Bill Hamilton on WPJK. A bond bond. In Orangeburg. <laughs> Stick around for the exciting finale. We'll be back with more after these messages. There was a time when a person's word was enough. A time when a handshake meant something. And integrity really mattered. Farm Bureau Insurance continues to live by these principles. That's our pledge. And it hasn't changed since the day we got started. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. Learn more at scfbins.com. Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to support SC State Athletics. Contact your local agent for all your auto, home, and life insurance needs. All South Carolinians aged five years and older are now eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. For help finding a vaccine location in your area, visit scdhec.gov slash vaxlocator or call 1-866-365-8110. COVID-19 vaccines are free and don't require ID or insurance. Visit scdhec.gov slash vaxlocator or call 1-866-365-8110 to find a vaccine location near you. Welcome back to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Score with 321 to go in the basketball game. South Carolina State 58, Maryland Eastern Shore 58. Celebrating your pride in 
Achievements. Johnson's a proud sponsor of the MIAC. And when reaching for an ice cold beverage, make it a Coke. Often a bevy of flavors you're bound to find when it satisfies your taste buds. Coca Cola, a proud sponsor of South Carolina State Athletics. At the free throw line, Jamal Davis. The crucial free throws here. <clears throat> First attempt is off the front of rim, no good. Boy, he's now, yeah, he's struggling a little bit. It's three for six. Jamel Davis will have another one coming. Second attempt is up. It's no good. Rebounded by Daquan Brown, but it was <laughs> stolen by Boyles of Boy, Maryland Eastern Shore. A, so Maryland Eastern Shore will have the basketball. Uh, that's a tough possession, though, for South Carolina State. Phillips with the basketball. Goes left side over to Tuki Nugent. 1-3-1 one, one zone by South Carolina State. Creating some problems. Nugent with the basketball. Right side to Phillip. Phillip thought about the three out front to Nugent. Nugent starts the drive. Goes left side to Boyles. Boyles way outside his comfort zone. Goes left side to Phillips. Shot put up. It's no good. Tapped up by Nugent. And it's going to be a foul called on Rashawn Edwards. Oh, my bl- goodness. Block out. That was, that, he backed into him. And a call on Rashawn Edwards. So now, Maryland Eastern Shore is going to go to the free throw line and have to make a couple free throws. What an opportunity. The Bulldogs missed two opportunities on the end. Now, Maryland Eastern Shore. 2.49 to go here in the basketball game. And I, 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 Rashawn Edwards was a little upset about that, Bill, but when you stick that backside out and push backwards. They usually they're going to call it. Yep. And Nugent made the free throw. So 59-58 now. Maryland Eastern Shore on top of South Carolina State. 2.49 remaining. Nugent's second was up and good. 60-58. to Pollard coming back in. Thompson will go out. Well, you Cohen see, Thompson goes out. Now the, the difference in the ball game, the two missed free throws by uh, Davis down there. Yep. And so Akintanya comes back in. Pollard comes back in. Gives him some size. T.J. Matlock inbound to Raquan Brown. Back over to T.J. Back over to Sean Edwards. He'll bring it up. 2.40 to go here in the game. Edwards across the timeline. Bulldogs need a basket. 60 to 58. Edwards goes top of the key to T.J. Matlock. Left side is Raquan Brown. Raquan right side to Edwards for three. It's good. Rashawn Edwards with the three-pointer. 61-60. Bulldogs take the lead. They left him all along, then. He nails it. 2.20 to go in the game. Bulldogs lead by a point. Need a stop here. Deshaun Phillips across the timeline gets it over to Nugent. Nugent had it knocked away by Edwards, but Nugent recovered it. Right side to Phillips. Phillips, top of the key, Tukey Nugent. Nugent between the leg dribble starts to drive. Has it knocked away. Recovered by Jamel Davis. Bulldogs have it. TJ up the floor to Deshaun Edwards. Edwards. Hold it up. Will slow things down. Goes inside now to Raquan, Daquan, Raquan Brown. Brown. Lays it up to, he gives it up to TJ. TJ lays it up and in. My goodness, two quick buckets. What a great pass. Bulldogs with the bucket around. to take a two, a three-point lead. 63 for South Carolina State. 60 for Maryland Eastern Shore, but only a minute 49 remaining. That was a good look by Brown to find TJ break into the basket. And my goodness, I didn't see that. <laughs> I don't know how TJ caught it. I don't either. <laughs> a minute 49 to go. Bulldogs equaling our biggest lead of the game at three. Three points. They need a stop. That's crucial. Merrill Eastern Shore has several three-point shooters there, so the Bulldogs need to run them off that three-point line. A minute 49 remaining. Ernest Robinson, Bill Hamilton on WPJK ESPN Orangeburg. South Carolina State is trail. Or what? <laughs> Just <laughs> 85, 90% of this game. I'll tell you, yeah. 95% of this game. Bulldogs yes, indeed. with a three-point lead, 63-60. Both teams in the bonus. Double the bonus. The double bonus, yep. And uh, Maryland Eastern Shore, three-point shooters. They got Chase Davis, of course, uh, Deshaun Phillips. If there was a free phone from the Cricket More Phone, More Fun Mega Sale, you're going to experience all the web's got to offer. Video chat with your friends, stream your favorite games. Right now, Samsung, Motorola, LG, and more devices are starting at free. Smile, you're on Cricket. A minute 49 to go here in this basketball game. Ernest Robinson, Bill Hamilton, and WPJK, glad to have you with us. Yep, 
Bulldogs up by three. Uh, the Hawks uh, have possession. Deshaun Phillip will inbound. For the Bulldogs are signed there with T.J. Madlock, uh, Raquan Brown, Jamel Davis, and Ed Oliver Hampton. This is Chase Davis up the floor for Maryland Eastern Shore. Baseline pass to Kevon. It's good! Uh, Kevon Boyles with the three. Uh, That's the game. 63-60. That's one of those three-point shooters. They got about three of them out there on the court now. And this they have to go in the game. Rashawn Edwards with the basketball. Gets a pick from Jamel Davis. Dribbles toward the top of the key. Rashawn Edwards between the legs dribble. Rashawn Edwards has it stolen by Maryland Eastern Shore. Fought for it. It's going to be tied up. Possession arrow will point. Goes to Maryland Eastern Shore. Yep, Maryland Eastern Shore. I don't know what Edwards was trying to do on that possession. You know, a little got, bit. Got down and deep and then went yep. between the legs. Yeah, uh huh. And there's no way they allowed him to get back up with that thing. 63 63, a minute 20 to go. That's a. You know, the barn is on fire. Empty possession there for the Bulldogs to see if they need a stop now. They need to they need to run those three point shooters. It's not an informal timeout. Yep. <coughs> or is it a timeout? Uh, uh they didn't signal timeout. No. Oh. I guess I guess because they were cleaning up the floor. No, they gotta go back out. Jason now. Crafton was trying to talk to his players. Yeah. Kevon Boyles. Wow, what a Chase big Davis, shot. Deshaun Phillip, Thompson. And Powell Jr. For the Bulldogs, Brown, Madlock, Edwards, Davis, and Ed Oliver Hampton. Here come the Hawks. Davis with the drive. Misses the shot. Rebounded by South Carolina State. Boy, he was out of control, Bill. He was. I don't know what he was trying Bulldogs to do. Bulldogs got the uh, shot. He didn't even draw iron. Bulldogs have it. Madlock will give over to Edwards. We approach a minute to go. 63-63, one minute to go. Big, big opportunity here for South Carolina State. If 14 they... seconds on the shot clock. Edwards with the basketball on the right wing. Edwards for three. It's good! Rashawn Edwards with a three-pointer with 48 seconds to go. Two in a row. My <laughs> goodness. Bill, he made up his mind he was going to shoot that thing. I tell you, not a... But Brown East to show, got those three-point shooters too. You know what happened on the last time. 66, 63, 48 seconds to go in the ball game. Yeah. You got to run those three-point shooters off that three-point line. Now. Boy, what a shot there by Rashawn Evans, who earlier made the one to give the Bulldogs a, a 63-60 lead. But, of course, Balls came back and tied it up for the Hawks. And now another three by uh, Edwards to give the Bulldogs a three-point lead with Less than 50 seconds left. Folks, don't run away from challenges. Run over them. Just do it. Nike is the official apparel and footwear of the MIAC. Let's see. Everybody, let's see. 48 seconds to go. The Sun fillable inbound for South Carolina State. I'm for Mail and Eastern Shore. Yeah, Bulldogs need to play really good defense. Phillips throwing it long. And in the ill-advised fact, he stepped in bounds. And Phillips is upset with the official. The official said Phillips stepped in throwing it with his follow-through. So oh. South Carolina State will get the basketball back on the baseline. He hesitated, then they stepped on the line. And threw the ba pass. Good break for the Bulldogs. T.J. Madlock will inbound. 48 seconds to go. Bulldogs have a three-point lead. And possession. Of course, you want to stay... Aggressive. Edwards with the basketball. Hawk over there by Thompson. Edwards starts a dribble drive. Edwards pushed off. Offensive foul. Oh, my goodness. How can you do that? Edwards was a little too much one-on-one -on -one that time. He, he, he gave the push off. I think he should have given the ball up. He... And with that foul, Bill, they're going to walk the other way. They're going to shoot you. No, that's an offensive foul. Oh, but, okay. They won't shoot that one. So, Rashawn Edwards. But he turns the ball over with to 38 him. seconds to go. Yep. So, it's a full timeout. We will keep it right here. So and There was no need to rush. You know, you had players, you, uh, guys on the wing over there, uh, hit one of those guys. Hey, MIAC fans, take a hot route by getting a car insurance quote at Geico.com. Find out how much you can save. Geico, 
15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. So another proud sponsor of MEAC Athletics here at South Carolina State, GEICO. Glad to have them involved with today's broadcast. And Bill, you know, we're excited about the um, MEAC tournament. Coming yes, indeed. Soon. That's going to be uh, exciting. Always a great time. I know you'll be there. Uh, yeah, March the 9th. Uh, I mean, uh, start the 9th through the 12th. I thought I had I thought I had the date, but I just saw something. They said if you got a, a voice of gold, you play an instrument, and you bust a move, the media, oh, yeah. hard media, are yeah, for entertainers, vocalists, and dancers, they are uh, of all ages and backgrounds for the national anthem and halftime at the MEAC 22 basketball tournament. For more information, visit 103jams.iheart.com or the beat. BI.com at iHeart.com if you feel like you can do that. Yeah, nice time to, to get some notoriety. It's, it's in Norfolk, which is in Richmond. It's, it's in Norfolk. Okay. Mm -hmm. 38.3 seconds to go. At the scope, where it's oh, yeah, for years. Scope. Yeah, it's been there for a long time. So, Maryland Eastern Show will inbound. And inbound in this time for Maryland Eastern Show is going to be Chase Davis, a different player. Yeah. Phillip was the other last guy inbound. Okay. So now they'll pass it into Phillips. 35 seconds to go, clock moving. Three-point shooters. Phillips over to Chase Davis, over to uh, Boyles. Boyles is one of the three-point shooters. Boyles, inside pass now to Powell Jr. Powell Jr. puts up the shot, missing it inside, tapped up, rebounded by Rashawn Edwards of South Carolina State. Edwards with the drive. 17 seconds to go, he's foul. Rashawn Edwards drew the foul, and Pollard was complaining to the official that he'd gotten fouled. But Rashawn Fields, Rashawn Edwards can put the game away. Pollard just shot that short. Yeah, he, he was short on that one. 18.8 seconds to go. The Bulldogs leading by three. 66-63. Now, Edwards has a chance, a uh, double bonus. He, it's, he has a chance to give the Bulldogs a five-point lead, which would be really key, especially with the three-point shooters that the Hawks have on the floor. First attempt is up. Oh, rattles in. Oh, boy. Rattles in. I, I, I came in on a hope and a prayer. Now, that's a good lead there, four points. I like five better. Man. I like five better. <laughs> but uh, but it, if you give him a three, if he makes a three, you still get the ball. So five-point lead would be good. Here was second attempt is up. It's good. It's a five-point lead with 18.8 .8 seconds to go. No fouls. Uh, that's what the coach just Phillips said. is up the floor now for Maryland Eastern Shore. Phillips puts up the three. It's no good. Rebounded by Rashawn Edwards. Edwards looking to draw the foul. Does so with 10 seconds to go. And Rashawn Edwards can put this game away. And South Carolina State, Bill, can you steal a game at home? I <laughs> Well, you know, the way this team has struggled all night, they did the up here climb. I would say this is a steal. 68-63. A lot of fans are leaving. It's not over yet. But uh, if he nails these two free throws, I think uh, you can just about give the Bulldogs their sweep. As, as Dickie V says, they ain't going to crank up the bus. Mr. How about Driver. that? <laughs> yes, sir. First attempt is up and good. Six-point lead. That's two possessions. Two possessions. Bulldogs can go to six and three in the conference. How does that sound? That would be, uh, well, actually, second attempt is up and good. Seventy to sixty-three. Actually, that'd be ago. six and four. Oh, six and four. Okay. Six and four. Yeah, right. Uh, a half game behind Howard, who they got to play later. Newton in the front court. Shot put by Mincer is no good. Fought for rebounded by Ed Oliver Hampton. It's over. And that is going to do it. The buzzer will sound, and South Carolina State has stolen one at home. South Carolina State 70, Maryland Eastern Shore 63, and Bill, uh, you know, the Bulldogs have had some good wins. This is I good tell you, this year was a real battle uh, up here climb all night. South Carolina State didn't take its first lead to about the six-minute mark of the ball game, and of course, uh, they battled, uh, got some timely uh, basket from uh, Rashad Edwards down the stretch there, although he made a couple mistakes too, but he really hit those two big threes and also nailed four free throws, so he gave the Bulldogs the edge down the stretch. South Carolina State gets a win over Maryland Eastern Shore, 70 to 63. We'll work on the wrap-up of today's game. After these messages, you're listening to ESPN Orangeburg. Hello, this is Stacey Huff, host of Hump Nation Sports Zone, 
Saturdays from 10 to 11 a.m. right here on 92.9 FM ESPN Orangeburg. I'll cover local, national, and worldwide sports topics and also take a look at the week that was and a look ahead at the week to come. I look forward to having you along for the ride each and every Saturday morning, 10 to 11 a.m. on Orangeburg's ESPN station, 92.9 FM. Huff Nation Sports Zone, a fun trip around the world of sports.